they don't. <laughs> Hey, how you doing? Good morning. Good morning, Saints. How you boys doing? What's going on? It is another day of grace and peace, and we're ready to sow some grace seeds. So uh, <laughs> praise yeah? the Lord for that, brother. How, how you doing, Mike? Oh, I'm you doing wonderful. Good? Yeah. yeah, I feel great this morning. It's great to have Brad here this morning. Start out That's Monday up. right with all the Saints here. And, yeah. Uh, just love it and enjoyed the messages from yesterday. Let's, and uh, you gave, uh, and oh, I know you don't, don't want to pat yourself no, on the back, I don't hear it. No. but I'm telling you, oh, it, it was a great, great message on Christmas yeah. mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, just rejoiced in it. Um, you asked the question, oh. am I in the Christmas mood or spirit? <laughs> nope. Hey, let me just say, <laughs> every day is another day of grace and peace, and I don't, uh, esteem one day above another. Amen. So another opportunity. I, the great thing about the Christmas season is that a person that would rob you on Christmas would actually open a door for you at a store and let you in. Right. So, uh, right. you know, it's a great time to be able to talk to people and share the gospel of the right. grace of God right. with people. I, I understand why Christians are, some Christians would be just sort of annoyed about christmas you know the whole well they they don't even get the dates wrong yeah you know they don't even get the they they, they the lord couldn't have possibly been born in december 25th yeah uh they often get tradition that when they tell the story of the his birth it's wrong the, <laughs> you know then they find out from what is it the two babylons that yeah. the uh tree has i don't know Babylonian origins, maybe. Yeah. You know, that doesn't bother me, though. I mean, it's just a, uh, it's a, a tree with lights. It's just a tree with lights. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and actually, I saw this article last night. This, um, there was a big old battle about the Christmas tree, and I was laughing my head off. Oh. It was, um, this, uh, this was in, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, in the Christian Post, where this, uh, it was pretty funny. This li library was up in arms about a Christmas tree. <laughs> Hey, let me see if I get this right here. So, library Christmas tree spat leads to an activist resignation after calling Christians disgusting trash. Is this <laughs> what you think your magic sky daddy wants? This activist wrote, and it was all about a Christmas tree. <laughs> they were thinking about getting rid of a Christmas tree because it was making people uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And the activist is just equating the Christmas tree as some sort of Christian thing. Yeah, It's got nothing to do with Birth of Christ, Christianity. No. No. So, you, so the Chris, the poor Christmas tree <laughs> is getting bashed on by people on both sides of the aisle now. Oh, I know. <laughs> Nobody wants to have anything to do with the Christmas tree. I'll take a Christmas tree. Thank you very much. I'm not afraid to have a Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> Although we don't have one, I, we've never decorated a day in our lives. No, I, we, no. we, we we wouldn't know what how to what to do with it if we did get one. Yeah. Uh, but I thought it was pretty. It was pretty funny. It was pretty funny. Um, yeah, Christmas tree, and 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 that makes me think of the the peanuts, Charlie Brown Christmas special you mm -hmm. know yep. when uh, it was all about a Christmas tree. Remember? <laughs> yeah. And then Linus had to get up and. And explained the meaning of Christmas, and he, and he gave Luke two. Do you know yeah. the backstory behind that? Yeah, uh, I actually have. Yeah, I ha I also have a big old article on Schultz, and the whole backstory. We we talked about it last year. There was a big old battle with the network over Linus talking about the the me real meaning of Christmas. Real meaning. So here, here's what went down on that. Uh, the networks got the script, and they said, "Well, we don't we don't want that part." And they they said, "Charles," they told Charles Schultz, "You got to take that part out." And Charles said, okay. okay, he didn't want to make waves. He just wanted to get something on the air, right? He said, okay. And then he, he kept he kept intending to get around to edit it and edit, and he never got around to edit it. And then I don't know what happened. Maybe he did, but they he sent in the wrong one, and they just ran it as is with it still in there. Uh, um, even though he was told to take it out, it, it hmm. ended up not being taken out. And they got – after the network execs got flooded with response from the public loving that part. Um, yeah. Yeah. There was a, I just shared it, um, an article. There was a big old article that came out over the weekend on Charlie Brown's Christmas miracle. And, um, and this big old article about Charles Schultz. Um, it's really, really long. He was a pretty, uh, hardcore Lutheran. Yeah. yeah. He was a big old Lutheran. And, um, uh, was very active in his church, and uh, this whole battle was 
with the network uh, was briefly covered. Uh, but yeah, it, it's pretty fascinating. I have always loved that Charlie Brown Christmas. I can't imagine life without, you know, <laughs> having, I have watched that every year and listening to Linus give the, give the meaning of Christmas. Amen. And that poor Christmas tree that could not stand up. Um, in any event, I have, I have, um, from last night, I have, there, I have more news than I have time well, to wait, share. Wait, wait, time out, time so, out, time out. You ask Mike how he's doing. Yeah. You ask me how I'm doing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I ha- uh, I have a question I have just for you here, brother. Oh, oh. but uh, let us let us so, find out yeah. how he's doing first. Yeah. Well, how you doing? Well, let's just. Say- All right. So let's move yeah. on here. <laughs> we got we got um, oh, I got some uh, news articles it. here. For- <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, Brad, I'm totally back, kidding. But totally that's good. all right. <laughs> yeah. No, I no, went. Uh, I went to a birthday party yesterday. Um, out at a rec center and ended up playing some sand volleyball. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, I'm not, Mm -hmm. I'm not 22 anymore. Mm -hmm. I I, I woke up this morning. (laughs) I could hardly move (laughs) after going for one or two dives coming up unsuccessfully on those digs. (laughs) And I don't think I'll be playing sand volleyball anytime soon again. Um, Uh, the, uh, well, I'll ask you, did you, did you over the weekend, did you see much about the whole I mean, since he is the theorist of a conspiratorial nature, mm-hmm. uh, did you did you do a deep dive or read anything on the, all the Twitter files that were re- released over the weekend? I literally was just listening uh, to it on the way uh, in. On the oh my goodness, and, and you know, and, and so the biggest, the two biggest news items on the Christian news sites was the Twitter file dump over the weekend, mm-hmm. the collusion between all these government agencies mm-hmm. and Twitter to actually censor a U.S. sitting president. Yep. Off of the platform. That's it was just jaw dropping, but it doesn't change anything. I'm I'm thinking, okay, so this is the news article. What's the grace application? That what's the spiritual application we can make from all of this? Just because we know the depth of corruption doesn't change anything about us. Amen. Doesn't change about who we are, how we act, what we do, Amen. how we do it. Changes nothing for us. Amen. In fact, we're seeing. You know, the depths of corruption now, and, and we're getting confirmed everything that we secretly, yeah, we you know, knew. Yeah, we yeah. secretly knew. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, didn't, it didn't change anything for us. No. Um, but, you know, I used to avoid Twitter like the play because it was such a nasty place. And now I avoid I avoid Twitter because if I go down, if I get on Twitter, it's uh, hours are going to be gone because it's so much fun. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. ridiculous. The memes last night, they had a whole, the, you mean <laughs> crazy was, I was laughing my head off. And they uh. had a, and they had, the, you know what was trending last night? Hashtag died suddenly. <laughs> wow. I had never seen that on Twitter wow, before. Wow. Never. Right. People uh, right. telling their stories, family members, children. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I went down. I, I, I fell asleep at 10. I woke up at 1. I couldn't, I couldn't go back to sleep. I went down that rabbit hole. I couldn't stop for like an hour. It yeah, was yeah. unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. So anyway. The, the one I saw, the hashtag I saw was. Fauci lied, people died. Yeah. That right, was another right. big one, too. You, yeah. you know, the died one thing, suddenly, you never would have seen yeah. The one thing I've learned is that the only thing that this present evil world has to offer is lost souls. That's and right. So I, I was thinking last the night, Lord for that. I was thinking last night, well, if I did hashtag died suddenly, I should give gospel. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And there then you at go. least somebody reading yeah. that would, would see the gospel. Now's just, the time. Yeah. Problem is, I'm too wordy for Twitter. I couldn't condense it down to (laughs) well, you know, 120 characters. Elon, I couldn't do it. Listen, Elon (laughs) Musk is actually admitted, or he was on a show and they were interviewing him, and they want they were trying to give him the gospel or find out what he thought about God and did he believe there was a God and all that. And finally, during this interview. He finally got to say, yeah, I do believe there is something, you know, there's a higher being basically, or, you know, he almost said, yeah, I believe that there is a God, but they just kept hounding poor old Elon instead of giving him the love of Christ and that Elon was born a sinner and he's just like everybody else, right? Uh, He was born with a sin nature. Doesn't matter how much money you have and everything else at least you're equal to everybody that's ever been born. You you never asked for that sin nature, but you got one, right? Right. And so just to give him the love of Christ and why he's in the condition that he's in, and then they could have said, listen, will you believe, or what they asked him is, do you accept Jesus Christ? 
but they didn't say, do you believe or accept Jesus Christ as your savior or your payment that he paid for your sins? So they never gave him a real clear gospel and they kept hounding and hounding him. And he finally said, well, yeah, now, yeah, yeah, I guess I just accept Jesus. Right. And so here these guys are trying to take credit and say, God, look what we did. We got him, you know, he, we got him saved. He didn't get saved. <laughs> you know, he just said, he just I, well, got out I, of that situation. Yeah, I yeah. just <laughs> accept the fact that maybe there is a Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And just like there's so many millions and billions of Muslims that accept Jesus Christ, they accept him as a great prophet. Yeah. And then you got all these people that are Catholics uh, in Catholicism, and they accept Jesus Christ in the form of a wafer. So when you're talking about it, I love brother Brad, when he talks about, and a lot of times he gives the gospel at the end of the program, when he's here, he'll say, accepting Jesus Christ is not the same as you receiving Jesus Christ Woo! and big, big difference. And so that's my, my spinoff on all that. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. I liked it. Uh, um, I, I pray for brother and not, I can't call him a brother. He is a friend. I pray for Elon. Pray that he is Elon's your friend. That he would get saved. Yeah, everybody is either a brother or a sister in uh, Christ, I see. or, or a they're friend. a friend. Uh, okay, they're either in Adam or they're in Christ. Right, and that's it. I don't label people. You know, um, I, I just never so, want to label people. Uh, so I, I love Twitter now, and that I thought that whole thing was fascinating. But the other, the other big news. I was on the Christian news site, so it was about the Respect for Marriage Act that passed the House. Now it's going to go to the president's desk for signing. Uh, they were calling this the Disrespect for Marriage Act. Totally <laughs> is. The thing about that that's probably worth sharing, uh, you know, earlier drafts of this bill was a horrific attack on religious liberty, and they uh, the sound the alarm bells were sounded as well they should. But they did, over the course of, of – um, you know, this bill evolved and they did find, eventually add a provision of li religious liberty to the bill, which meant means that if you have a, shall we say, alternative lifestyle couple that comes into your church, they, they want you to marry them. And you want to, you know, it used to be that if you told them no, they could sue you for discrimination. Yeah. And now they have actually made made you free to say no if, if yep. you don't want to do it without having to worry about being sued. We've had yep. board we We talked about this on board meetings. What do we do if something like this <laughs> yeah. happens? It's possible. And it could, yeah. It was very possible. Yeah. So now they don't even get me started on the bill itself. It's the whole thing is just a absurd piece of writing that's, you know, <laughs> they have no constitutional right to even pass a bill like this, defining marriage and all this stuff. They're totally tromping on states' rights. It's a completely unconstitutional bill. On the other hand, it's not going to be an assault on religious liberty like we thought. So I guess that would be worth sharing too. But then yeah. there's this other article I got to share, had me rolling last night. This one you won't hear in mainstream media. It's going to be, it's, it is epic. <laughs> there is a, a protestia, which is a Calvinist news rag, had an article where they, <laughs> they asked, a chat bot. There are chat bots out there. They'll basically say, ask me anything and they'll give you a little essay. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So they asked this AI chat bot to write an article on why Joel Osteen is a heretic. And even the chat bot could tell you why he's a heretic. Yeah. Yeah. It was hysterical. I love it. Uh, yeah. There are actually two chat bots here. I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to quote the second one here. Joel Osteen is a popular televangelist and the senior pastor, blah, 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 blah. Uh, many critics have labeled him a heretic due to his teachings, which they argue deviate from traditional Christian beliefs. One of the main reasons why Osteen has been accused of being a heretic is his emphasis on the prosperity gospel. Mm. This is the belief that God wants to bless believers with Ooh. material wealth and good health as long as they have enough faith. This teaching goes against the traditional Christian belief that early possessions are fleeting, ultimately unimportant, and that true riches come from a relationship with God. Wow. Yeah. I have two. Wow. Is I that have what the chatbot said? <laughs> That's what the chat bot said. Wow. Well, I want to I want to add to the chat box. If I had to label uh, label Joel Osteen, I would label him with two words: <laughs> spiritual thief. Yeah, and that's about it. But go ahead. He's, my oh, brother. I mean, he's. I, I think he he knows exactly what he's doing, telling yeah. people exactly what they want to hear, Amen. and just cashing in on it. Yeah. Um, 
And well, uh, I thought it was amazing the chatbot got it right. So well, uh, they talk about it. Uh, he's also been criticized for his lack of emphasis on sin and repentance in his sermons. He often focuses on the positive aspects of Christianity, such as the power of faith and the importance of being a good person. However, he rarely talks about the need for believers to confess their sins. Uh, mm. Sorry about that. Yeah. No, you got that wrong. And turn away from their old sinful yeah. ways. Well, that's a true thing. That's what putting off the old man would mean. Yep. This is a fundamental aspect of the Christian faith, and many argue that by neglecting it, Osteen is leading people astray. And then, in one famous incident, he was unable to answer a simple question about the Bible doctrine of the Trinity on national television. Well, that's a hard question to answer, frankly. Uh, this lack of knowledge and understanding has raised concerns among many Christians who believe that Osteen is not qualified to be a pastor. And this this what this uh, website's like, yeah, we may have found ourselves another writer. That's just awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so what would be wrong with the whole confessing your sins thing? <laughs> I'll just throw that out there. <laughs> Anybody wants to take a stab at it? I thought that was hilarious. I couldn't believe it. Oh, Steve, they, they nailed him. Health, wealth, prosperity, confession yeah. of sins. Anybody want to well, rip into any of that? Anybody I, feel the need to <laughs> well, get worked I, I, out? I do. You know, if someone tells me or talks to me about the health, wealth, and prosperity, gospel and and uh, what I would call a social gospel uh, that Joel Osteen uh, preaches all the time. Um, I would say we who understand grace also have a prosperity pr- message. Yeah. And our prosperity message is when I think about this in prosperity alone, Ephesians 1, 3 says that we've been blessed with all, all, spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ Jesus. From a physical point of view, can you put a dollar figure on what that's worth? In a, in Galatians 5.22, it talks Amen. about the fruit of the Spirit, and it talks about love and joy and peace, and those are things that we already possess. And from a physical point of view, can you put a dollar figure on what those things are worth? Right. I can tell you so many people that have many, uh, that have a lot of riches and have made a lot of money, uh, but don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as their savior or they live a miserable life. And you can read all about people that have won, um, the lottos and have committed suicide. And because they have, they do not have that peace that passeth all understanding, you know, <clears throat> that God consciousness that they were born with was never filled up by the person of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. living in and through them. And so when I talk about our prosperity message, and we do have a prosperity me- message, health, when we talk about health, the only thing that we're waiting for right now is a new glorified body. That's it. As far as positionally, how much are you going to pay for a flight, Jeff Bezos, um, <laughs> to go to get yourself seated in the heavenlies? Yep. How much are you going to pay for that? Or flight? how much will people pay for that flight <laughs> to where we are actually positionally seated in the heavenlies? I mean, how do you I mean, you talk about a prosperity message. We've got it and we need to be talking about it but it's not in the physical realm. And so uh, I just rejoice in it. And then when we go to confession of sins, all I've got to say is please read 1 John 1 through 9. And it talks about if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Read that verse and tell me how many times do you have to be cleansed from all unrighteousness? It says once. And so the moment you believe and trust that Christ died for your sins, at that moment, every sin, past, present, and future has been paid for. So the only place that I'm going to come in and and say, yes, where I need to confess is if I sin against my dear brother Brad or against Joel or anybody else, I can first go to the Lord and say, thank you, Lord for forgiving me of that sin. And now I'll take it one step further and I'm going to go to Joel or Brad or anybody else I offend. And I'm going to ask them for forgiveness. 
according to Ephesians 4.32. And hopefully they're going to forgive me because God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven them. Well, you know, and I, so they will say, gracefully, Mike, we forgive you because God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven us of any sin that well, we you know how uh, how teaches auto flush to forgive whether or not somebody you <laughs> yeah. know and i tell uh, but i like to I, I, I sometimes i'm like well you know i try auto flush but sometimes yeah. you need a plunger yeah when you're dealing with <laughs> <Yeah. Roto-Rooter. laughs> how much how much you gotta forgive man oh. and I'm dealing- well brother brother brad brad said it and i think it's important an auto flush to me seems like when someone offends you automatically it's gone It doesn't work that way because guess what else is attached to us? This sinful, this sinful flesh. And I don't care. Emotions and feelings come into play. So it may take my emotions and feelings to finally by scripture, I'm going to get rid of those emotions and feelings, but it may take me, uh, you know, five minutes. It may take me a half a day. It may take a day. It may take a week for me to get over those emotions and feelings if I'm not applying scripture uh, to those feelings to overcome those emotions and feelings. So to just say auto flush, it just doesn't automatically go away. Um, There are other things that are involved in our body, uh, this body of sin, uh, you know, and so uh, I just, uh, I, I hear that term and it sounds so great. But I I don't know. You'd have to explain to me when you say auto flush, what do you mean by that? Are you saying the moment somebody sins against you or whatever, you just automatically say, uh, that's it. It's gone. And I haven't gotten to that level. (laughs) I don't think until I get a new glorified body, I'll ever get to that level. But it, it becomes easier as I take on more and more scripture and the new man is applying that scripture. I find out that my emotions and feelings when I'm wronged or someone's hurt me, um, it, they don't last very long. Mm. Brad's probably got something to say about that. (laughs) Well, Hey, I'm (laughs) like you, I I live in this tent of flesh. I I can hold a grudge. I'm not proud of it. I I'm capable of that. Um, I, I work on that. I try to do better on that, but what, what if there's something that's, it's an ongoing, wrong that Mm. that is continuing where the other person they're just wrong (laughs) they continue and i'm not i don't know am i supposed to be in continuing state of overlooking that or getting past that or do i address it and stop the wrong and then you see a i don't know does it require is it a requirement to forgive that i see a repentant heart in them or at least an acknowledgement of what what if they don't even acknowledge it i didn't do your well yes you did you did Mm. do me wrong you know yeah so that's a that's a tough area. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Well, forgiveness and forgetting are two different things. And I think we, we should, um, uh, we need to forgive and get that out of us uh, immediately. If someone's wronged us or whatever, that forgiveness, but forgetting about that person, you know, a lot of times it may come between you and that person, whether they be a believer or not, that you find out that this person may be just at a point where you just need to walk away from them. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you love them. And, and I love what, uh, uh, pastor Hal said to me one time when I was having some issues. Um, and he just said, Mike, recover yourself from the snare of the devil and you need to get into scripture. And there's your answer. There's your cure. The scriptures, God's word will overcome those areas of forgiveness and forgetting is something that's a decision you'll just have to make whether that person uh, in, in, in your life is worth, and I don't want to say worth, but it, it is uh, positive. You're not saying that to, to, to being forgive around. Some, you're not saying to forgive somebody means trust is automatically restored. Yeah, no, I'm right. not saying that. Oh, no, all. no, not I've at all. I've said that many times. Yeah. Forgiving is one thing. There's, yeah. there's no scripture that says you got to keep trusting that person. Yeah. Um, as, um, yeah. You know, you, you're right. You're, of course, everybody uh, makes mistakes and, you know, everybody has, you're going to, you're going to, I mean, you're going to, there's going to be an expectation. Everybody's human, but uh, there are some people who <laughs> <laughs> very strategic in their um, mm-hmm. willful acts of, 
uh, self-serving rebellion against God, shall we say? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that, you know, uh, you can't expect uh, just because they apologize or whatever, you can't expect all of a sudden that pattern of behavior is going to change. They got to yeah. get into the word. They need to get the word in them. Yeah. You know, and they really need to let the words of Christ dwell in them richly before you can actually really see any change in a person. I don't Amen. think I do believe people can change. Yeah, absolutely. I, I changed 180 degrees mm. when I hit bottom. And it's, if, if I can change from what I mm. was to, you know, something halfway decent now, anybody can change. Change is possible. Uh, but, you know, that's not immediate and yeah. it shouldn't be an ex. Uh, all of a sudden, somebody's going to stop being nasty or a drama queen just because mm -hmm. they apologize for one little fit they had. Yeah. Uh, there's that ain't, that ain't going to happen. Well, I think you the know. two verses that we talk about that we apply on a daily basis and is more needed than probably, I know there's a lot of verses in scripture that we need to hide in our heart, but the two that affect my everyday life and the people I see are Colossians. Let my speech be always with grace that one is so important. And then the other one is the forgiveness, forgiving one another, even as God. And if people will hide that, those verses in their heart, the more they say them and the more they believe them, you'll find yourself just let things start kind of like a duck, you know, water just rolling off. That's where I can see the auto flush coming in when you're just applying those verses constantly. But Brad brought up a good point because some people that differ with us in the way that we believe or whether it be family members, relationships that we're involved in, sometimes they just, they don't understand what we, what we're all about. And sometimes they're just like a dog biting, biting down, you know, they grab you by the ankles and they just don't want to let go. And sometimes with grace, you've just got to tell them in a, a kind way and just say, listen, if, if, if every time we're going to talk, it leads to, you know, confrontation rather than confrontation, uh, we need to just kind of let's, let's, agree, right. let's agree to disagree right. that we're not good for one another. You know, we, we, we just don't, we just don't, you see vanilla and I see chocolate, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and those yeah. two, they just don't mix right now. Yeah. Let's yeah. let about three months, six months, a year go by <laughs> and then see yeah. where we're at. Yeah. You know? yeah. But that's my viewpoint. All right. Well, I guess um, I should probably uh, end the opening with something spiritual. So oh, we'll I'm sure about, we're getting some comments, about, my brother. How about, uh, how about CR Stam talking about the love of God? I'll oh, do that. Give us a, yeah. It's a really brief article here. Um, uh, uh, Stam's talking about millions of people, even religious people, are afraid of God and are struggling to earn his favor. Yes, <laughs> what a struggle it is to Ooh. get his favor. They suppose that salvation is the reward of showing enough love to him. If only they would believe what God himself <laughs> says, that if we are ever saved it will be entirely because he loved us and graciously provided for our salvation the apostle paul called god the god of love john declared that god is love john went on to say here in his love not that we loved god but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation the full and satisfying payment for our sins Amen. this is why salvation is so often called a gift in the bible it is the expression of god's love to sinners and so St. Paul tells us we were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. Amen. Or Titus 3, 4, after, the, after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. Does all this mean that God overlooks sin or condones it? By no means. In his love, he paid for our sins on Calvary's cross, that he might be just and the justifier of him that believeth in Jesus. Amen. And this is also why we read in Romans 5, 8, God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hey, there's some hot news I need to deliver. God, <laughs> God is not focused on sin today. God is focused on grace. Amen. And, and I love what you say all the time, brother. 
J Brother Joel. Brother okay. Joel says, you know, God didn't decide to love you. God is love. Oh, yeah. he, the, he doesn't make a choice. Well, today I'm going to love you a little bit. I mean, he's totally, his character is love. It, it will never change. And so for us as believers to be focused on grace is not where God would have us to be. The Lord Jesus Christ said, it is finished. Sin was dealt with. <laughs> now let's focus on grace yeah. because that's where if you're focused on grace, then you're not, you're not, if you're focused on sin, you're focused, your, your flesh reacts to that. But when you're focused on grace, that is the life of Christ that's wanting Amen. to live in and through you. Amen. And the life of Christ is you understanding that as you're living today, you're living based on love, gratitude, and appreciation for all that God has done for you because of what his son did for you. And so where we need to be focused on is delivering or sharing that gift of eternal life. There you go. Right? Yep. The only time we're going to bring up sin uh, when we're sharing the gospel is just telling a person, listen, you weren't born. I mean, you were born with a sin nature. It, it's in your DNA. You did not have to learn how to sin. It be, It's natural. And I think when you explain it in those terms, but you also need to take it one step further, and that is to say to an individual, listen, now that you understand why you sin, all right, you need to also understand that when you knew the difference between right and wrong, and you knew what you were doing, and you had a choice, you chose to sin. Right. And so that's why I always say to a person, that's kind of like the double death. Yeah. You were born with a sin nature, but you also chose to sin. That's right. Right. But um, I think we have to see if we can get Mike uh, worked up. No, a don't do more. it. He's not, don't do he's, it, my he's brother. Only, he's, only, oh. he's only at a certain level. Is there anything that gets you worked up, Brad? Well, I was just going to comment on him real fast. All right. So, Mike, you, All right then, saying, then we'll get into it. You're saying, oh, man, if I, if, if I, if I go out and I – I sin this afternoon, tomorrow, next week, next month. You mean I don't have to walk around in guilt in that? I don't have to confess that up every time? No, I don't think I you think, were. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think. I, you, it, it, let me just answer that. When you sin and you know that you sinned, all right, and let's say it's your own personal sin. Nobody else was involved in it. The way to overcome that is, first of all, you go to the cross and you recognize that what you did was sin. And you say, God, you know, you thank God and you thank the Lord Jesus Christ for paying for that sin. What gives the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father all the praise, glory and honor is when you stop the sin. Yeah. All right. Uh so it may take other people. I don't know how long, you know, everybody's different. Yep to deal with sin in their yeah. life. I don't know how long it takes, yeah. so I can't give you a, well, but yeah, that, I, that's the steps. I think I earlier he was talking about it. unbelievers before they got saved. I yeah. mean, you were basically in bondage to the sin in the flesh Sin was basically had become a habit, which is why they, we would call it a sin nature. You yeah. being in bondage to sin in the flesh, it's a habit. It's a sin nature. You, you, you might sometimes be able to say no to it, but you do it, but mm -hmm. because you're in the habit of doing it, sometimes it feels good to get in the flesh mm -hmm. and the other, uh, but after the, after you get saved, uh, we are uh, literally freed from the Probably power and the bondage of sin in the flesh. Paul says repeatedly in Romans 6, you are freed from sin. You have been freed. You, the, the bondage, you, the, the slavery is gone. The bondage has been cut. You have been freed from uh, the power and the bondage of sin in the flesh, which means, you know, once you get saved, sin becomes a choice. Um, you choose to do what you do in light of knowing what God has made you in Christ. And so, uh, you know, once you make start making mistakes, one after you get saved, it's just after that. I think it's perfectly acceptable to have a godly sorrow for that. The Amen. Corinthians felt that Amen. after yeah. uh, they got firmly rebuked by Paul and others for their carnality, uh, they still needed more rebuking yeah. and a lot of correction. But they felt that godly sorrow. Godly sorrow leads Leading. thee to repentance. Being sorry for what you did mm -hmm. leads you to change the your behavior. 
Yep. And that's a healthy process for people, for Amen. believers. But also at the same time, you know, I, I had like, when I came back to the Lord, I, you know, I used to curse like a sailor and I came back and I was every once in a while, some curse words would slip out and I'd be so mad that I made that mistake and stuff. And, uh, you know, I didn't confess that I did it and I didn't, uh, sometimes I would apologize to God for doing it, which I didn't have to do it. I really, as a believer needed to follow Philippians three thirteen, forgetting those mm-hmm. things that are behind and right. reaching forth mm-hmm. under those things that are before, you yeah. know, you know, you made the mistake. God knows you made a mistake, put it behind you and keep moving forward, looking up, putting on that new man and allowing the words of Christ to dwell in you richly, which empowers you to be able to do that. Um, don't get me started. Don't get me started. <laughs> let me do the, opening well, hey, we're, we're, we're just covering the gospel early instead of at the end today. <laughs> let me, let me, let me get the opening real quick and then we'll, then we'll dive into the comments and these yeah. guys, they, they, and I've got a bazillion articles that we could talk about. So, um, a big old podcast. Hey, okay. This is the grace life podcast. We are your mad, bad brothers in Christ. Mad in the sense of mid acts dispensational, bad in the sense of blessed and delivered. I'm some guy named Joel. This is the man, the myth, the guy who met, never met a Mike he didn't love, brother Mike, <laughs> Brad Klein. Amen. What does that look like? And then at the end of the table, we got one of the my original mad, bad brother, my brother uh, Mike Moriarty. Uh, we had we had a lady who called tried, called him pastor. I, she left a voicemail with Fred. She's like, I'm going to talk to Pastor Joel or Pastor Mike. I said, oh, Pastor Mike, no, come on no. over here, brother. No. There's a phone call for you. Uh, no, 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 um, no. Yeah, that's, but, um, that's you, my brother. Uh, <laughs> uh, we got a bunch of links beneath the video. Check it all out. I got all kinds of cra- uh, fantastic things. If you are new to Grace, if you just if if you don't even know who we are, what we're all about, check out the links be- beneath the video. Links to uh, this this little thing, empowered by His grace, which is all about. It's first of all, the first chapter is about the gospel, how to get saved, how to make sure you know where you're going, going to heaven, and then and then it's all about what God made you in Christ that moment you believe. One of the most important doctrines every believer needs to understand who you are in Christ, what God made you in Christ. Second Corinthians five, he made you a new creature. Behold all things new Romans six, three and four. You are dead, buried, risen with Christ. You are the old Jew. Everything you were in Adam, the old man is now D E A D dead forever. And now you are literally freed from the power and the bondage of sin in your life. So reckon it so, so you can live like that saint God made you in his son. Amen. Now, check that out. 14 bucks. I did get an email from a lady. There's apparently, it says pre-order now still on that on that <laughs> particular uh, page, but just ignore that. You can order it. Uh, people buying, the, buying books for Christmas, for their uh, yeah. friends yeah. and stuff for Christmas. So I was like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Outside of that, there's all kinds of other great stuff, you know, digital grace radio stations, grace messages 24-7, a bunch of places where you can get books, read articles, download tons of stuff. There's also a page on our website where you can uh, financially support us, takes time and money and energy to to do things like this. So if you can offer any financial support would be greatly appreciated. Support us through PayPal on our website or just send a check or money order to the church payable to uh, Fellowship Bible Church. Let's see who's in the house. Hey, we got hey. tons of stuff to talk about. Oh, oh. Uh, bring it on. <laughs> and I'm going to see you guys yeah. try to get Brad worked up <laughs> oh, and yeah, Mike yeah. also. That'd be oh. great. Um, we got Jerry Winehausen in the hey, house. Hey, How man. you doing, brother? Larry Hines, good to see you. Damon Chen, good morning, beautiful Hi. saints. And to our mad, bad, precious brothers of the mutual faith, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, grace, right. and peace <laughs> unto you all. Amen. Um, Lourdes down there in Puerto Rico. Hey. How you doing? Rick and Debs in Northern Idaho. Right. So good to see you. Carl Coates oh. out there in Norway. You beautiful brother. How you doing? Norway. Wow. Yeah, wow. he's out there in Norway. Woo. Yep. Great brother. Uh, snow filled yeah. Trondheim with a temperature of 10.4 oh. Fahrenheit. Cold, cold. Ooh. Mm. Uh, hey, we got Lori Loves Green in the house. How Amen. you doing, sweet sister? Our sweet yeah. sister up there in Alabama. Good to see you. Bob Picard. Amen. How are you feeling, Bob. man? What's going on? Wait, where where in Alabama? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I don't remember. Hey, Lori, where in Alabama are you from? <laughs> hey, look at that. We got Josie in the house. Amen. How are you, sweet sister? Amy Stewart is here. Good to see you. 
Uh, Rick says political parties are two wings of the same bird, and the bird is a predator. New <laughs> world order is marching <laughs> on. I I uh, love that comment. That's yeah, a great you, one. You're walking on my yeah, territory you're, there. You are. Yeah, yeah you are. That <laughs> was good. You're not going to find good. any argument from the three of us on no, that no, one. No. I love that. That was very uh, well put. You know, it's a we we are living in an age. I was um, yesterday. I while I was studying my Bible, getting ready for Wednesday night, I'm thinking, you know, we're living in an age where mm-hmm. just the spirit of Antichrist has taken a global yeah. hold on people with this yep. feverish pitch of just Antichrist, rebellious, mm-hmm. authoritarian, mm-hmm. dystopian, mm-hmm. just a frenzied embrace of all things that would conveniently lead to the mm-hmm. Antichrist after yeah. we're gone. It would seem. I just. Um, that so we well live in an put, age brother. of Antichrist. Yeah, and the well Antichrist. Put. The spirit of the Antichrist yeah, is alive Antichrist. and well right yeah. now. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. yeah. Um, I would. I was thinking yesterday too about the. Uh, you know, if we always talking about the new normal, or at least out in the media, they're talking about new normal and stuff, and <laughs> things are so weird, and everything's like living in the twilight zone, and yet. Just imagine the new normal the world's going to have to deal with after oh. we're gone and Ooh. the tribulation starts, you know? Yeah. <laughs> All miracle signs and wonders being oh. done by the Antichrist and the false prophet. A world where you can see miracles, oh. you know? Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh. Unbelievable. Oh, that is cool. It's hard to wake people up now. To yeah. get They're going to be seduced even further. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, we got Cliff Matthews in the house. Hey, How man, you doing, brother? brother. Hey. Uh, Lourdes says, I'm uh, sharing the gospel and Bible verses from other grace believers in Twitter as I am not in Facebook anymore. It is difficult for me in Puerto Rico to share those to others. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, that's hey, great. Give, us, give me, give, I, yeah. uh, share your handle on Twitter. I'd yeah, love to see I it. I am, uh, I am on Twitter. Yeah. At Our Blessed Hope. Uh, nobody you know, actually- I was listening to one of my conspiracy sources this morning. Uh, oh, well, am I trying to not say that word? I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know. Please, uh, please do uh, uh, sources of a conspiratorial nature. Yeah. yeah. So I was listening <laughs> to one of my, to one of my <laughs> sources. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. And, we won't um, get in trouble, brother, for that. And, and, yeah, uh, they will. They, the, the, the algorithms will get us. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying about Twitter, because uh, Elon is in there cleaning house. Oh, it's is awful. um is a lot of the lot of the lot of the uh, the, the woke crowd out there. It, well, I say a lot. There's starting to be some trickles of complaints saying. All I'm ever seeing in my feed now is a bunch of conservative memes and all these right wing people. And the response came back. Well, yeah, because now you're seeing the true majority without the shadow banning going on right. anymore and all the alterations that are happening. <laughs> wow. yeah. Right. Uh, it's so I, what I'm saying, trying to I'm encouraging. Yeah. It's OK. Twitter's OK. I now. Love back on that. okay oh, that. He yeah. fi- I mean, he fired uh, FBI people that were working at Twitter, man. Yeah. James Baker. I couldn't, it's just unbelievable. <laughs> the corruption of that place. Oh. And these people full of themselves thought oh. they'd get away with it. Never thought anything would ever happen to them. Well, oh, since you brought contrary. up the FBI, since you brought up the FBI, I'll throw a little factoid out there. This is a little fun fact. <laughs> the FBI has no constitutional authority to even exist. They have no mm-hmm. constitutional charter. In fact, years ago when they were being created, they asked for a charter from right. Congress and Congress refused them. Mm-hmm. So they have no legitimate reason to even exist. It's a little fun fact if anybody uh, wants to research that. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, along with income tax. Uh, the uh, <laughs> oh. Jer- Jerry Winehouse oh. says, uh, <laughs> you, guys, you guys, you're talking about, uh, Mike, are from the Babylon Bee. The, your gospel presentation was pretty weak. I did see that gospel presentation. It was it was awful. It was it awful. It was awful. And Elon's yeah. much like, yeah, I'm good with God. I don't, you yeah, know, yeah. I believe. No, no, him. that's not. Yeah. 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 That was a, that was a shame. Yeah. They had a great opportunity. They had a great there. opportunity. Um, yeah. Rick and Deb says, uh, uh Ref, uh, referencing religious freedom, you might be able to say no, but that won't stop the cancel culture from coming after you. Yep. Mm-hmm. But at yeah. least at least you've got more people willing to get your backs uh, yeah. when there is that flood of hate that's coming at you on Twitter. You got you got a whole lot of people willing to stand up and say, Mm-mm, no, not anymore. But cancel culture to me feels like, and, 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 and tell me if you guys agree with this, it feels like to me, it, it, it is a preconditioning to that whole mark system. You either take the mark or you're not going to be part of the system and you're, ca- you're ca- out, outcast, canceled, you know, killed, dead forever. You know, you, you, is, it, is it just me or is it like a conditioning for things that may for a mentality that will exist after we're gone? No, it's very much a cultural conditioning. That's yeah. a good word that you have. Absolutely. That you, yeah. um, 
Uh, Scott Wells says, uh, why did Lucifer's name change to Satan? Uh, well, Lucifer Lucifer means bright star, if I'm not mistaken. Bright yeah. shining star, something like that. And Satan is... He's uh, a light bearer. Yeah, light Sa bearer. Uh, Satan is uh, adversary. Yeah, adversary, accuser. Uh, so, um, yeah, it was, it was a, a, you know, when people go through conversions, uh, like Paul, he was first called Saul and then changed to the Apostle Paul. Uh, when Satan rebelled, his <laughs> he, he got himself a new name. Um, uh, but even after his fall, God still called him uh, Luce, uh, Bright Morning Star. If they, if they want a source on that. We talked about it last time I was here. We talked about Heiser's book, and he goes into quite a bit of detail on that. The Do you remember realm. the name of the book? The, the, un, the Unseen Realm, Dr. Michael Heiser, and he goes into deep detail on that exact topic. In fact, he even says that word Satan is more of a title and in, yeah. in the scripture is Ha Satan means the Satan or the Satan more more of a position mm. uh love that Rick yeah. says uh Olstein is a motivational speaker disguised as a preacher mm. his father was a preacher yeah and he knew exactly what to say mm -hmm. uh Deb says there are wealthy believers that are miserable suffering depression loneliness yep. selfiness exactly mm -hmm. exactly Hey, we got Jonathan and Dino in the hey, house. Man. What's going on, big hey. guy? Um, One of our missionaries that we pray for all the time. Yeah, let me. Um, I'll. Um, hey, Jonathan, if you're free, here I'll send you the. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll send you a link here. Uh, let me see here. Let me let me read a comment, and then you guys say something brilliant. <laughs> uh, Britain's favorite uh, uh, plundemic, Doctor Campbell. Uh, reviews of uh, VAERS numbers almost daily and flipped from the PO, the pro to the iffy to the contrary view over time. Recently, he shows more uh, died jubbed. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. Uh, that's all I'll say on that because YouTube is not Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Deb says auto flush and plunger are a great analogy, and my analysis of the emotional aspects are brilliant. And as a guy, I'm amazed. Um, yeah, totally. Hey, do um, you guys have anything more to say about Jonathan and Dino? I mean, um, hey, Jonathan, if you're free, I'm going to send you a link here, brother. And you're welcome to join us if you want. I'll send it to you through Messenger on Facebook. So A little chat? Yeah, we'll let, yeah. We'll let Jonathan in if he wants. Um, auto flip. Um, <sighs> We've, uh, it, that's, yeah, I, I think auto flush is brilliant. That is the mentality we ought to have when it comes mm -hmm. to forgiveness. When wrong is done, we should already know in advance, no matter how difficult it is, that we should just immediately and automatically forgive Amen. Um, and uh, try to put it past us, regardless of whether somebody apologizes or not. I don't, I think that's yeah. an irrelevant point because the, the act of forgiving is really being able to free you mm -hmm. from a bondage to bitterness and anxiety and frustration about that wrong that was done to you. That was the life I lived before I, I hit bottom and came back to the Lord. I was embittered, endlessly frustrated because I was refusing to forgive the people I mm -hmm. felt had wronged me. Um, and, uh, you know, forgiveness is about not about freeing, exonerating them from the wrong that they did. Forgiveness is about freeing you Amen. from a bondage of pain for a bitterness and all that. So, you know, on the other hand, you know, for automatic forgiveness ought to be uh, a habit we get into simply because, you know, Ephesians 432, just as the father forgave mm -hmm. us for Christ's sake. Amen. So too, we should forgive others for Christ's sake, because that that forgiveness of those others is but is going to reflect back on ultimately on Christ Himself. We should do that for Christ's sake as His ambassador, mm -hmm. so they could get a sense of what a relationship with Him would be like. They could get a sense of what He is like, some sort of sense of His personal righteous attributes. Um, and then you want to take forgiveness another step. Study Philemon. That takes yeah. that takes for that that is you have in that in that letter two mature believers talking about this horrible wrong that had been done to Philemon, and it, well it wasn't unbelievably horrible, but you talk about this wrong that was done to Philemon, and Paul never once says to forgive in that letter. What he says it, the the point of that letter is how much grace do you show somebody that wronged you? Amen. That's that's what mature believers talk about. Yeah. 
They don't talk about, oh, we got to forgive. They talk about, well, how much grace are you going to show this guy that wronged you? Amen. <laughs> yeah, and, That's a whole other ball game, and I'm not, I can't uh, say I'm, I'm totally there. And, and another way to look at that is when someone wrongs you, the first thing it, you need to plant or, or have the new man address, and he's saying it right there. He's saying, wait a minute, when that person does you wrong or sins against you, you're saying, well, Christ died for that sin. You know, so you're looking at that person that just sinned against you and you're saying Jesus Christ died for that sin he just committed. And if he's a believer, right. if, if that person's a believer and they offend you or they do you wrong, remember who's residing in them. They have the same trinity residing in them that we have in us. The question is, are they appropriating the trinity that's living in them? we want to appropriate the Trinity that's living in us. Right? right. So there's the difference. And brother Joel said it in the maturity of that believer, you know, in what stage are they acting in? We know they're not, uh, if they're a believer, they're not in the natural state, right? But they can go from being a babe. <laughs> they can be carnal <laughs> or they can be spiritual. So in what, you know, in what area are they really, uh, you know, involved in. Mike, and so you can go from one level to another. I've been a babe in Christ reacting to somebody or, or being spiritual. I mean, we go sometimes in different stages, depending uh, where you're at in your walk. And, you know, I'm not saying, you know, the one thing I think you, you may be thinking, uh, Brad, and I hope you're not that a lot of times, where a person is at in their walk is different. They're all different. We're all at a different stage in our walk. So if you see somebody that you think, wait a minute, you know, they're giving me all these things. Uh, what do they think they're better than I am? Because I'm not at the stage that they're at. Yeah. We never want that to come out uh, and be addressed in that way that someone would look at us and say, wow, look, man, they're putting themselves way above. Yeah. And yet this babe in Christ or a person that is not actually getting into the scriptures that much and they're not <clears throat> hiding the word in their heart. Uh, you've got to be real, real careful, you know, when you're dealing with people, especially yep. when you're giving. Totally it. agree. Well, advice. it sounds like the context you're saying, though, this uh, applying this auto flush concept is it sounds like you're applying it to other believers who just ain't who are just not far enough along to get it. What if they're not, what if they're not even believers? What if, what if they really, you, yeah. you, you take a wrong turn, you walk down an alley and somebody puts a knife to your throat and says, give me your money. Mm -hmm. Are you going to auto flush that one? You know, sometimes no. for, even if for unbelievers, uh, forgiveness can be an act of the flesh. Cause you feel like yeah. you're earning God's approval. Cause yeah, you're doing that right. forgiveness thing. Yeah. 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 Well, I would, it, I would think yeah. there could be a little bit of flesh. That, that, I'm not, hey, Jonathan just, and Dino, don't you totally agree with me I'm that I'm right in every respect I'm about not, everything I say? I <laughs> yeah, it. you're always right. Always right. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I love hey, me brother. some Jonathan oh, and Dino. Yeah. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing good. You always agree with the host. So nah, just say yes. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Uh, you, it is fantastic to see you again, brother. How you doing? What's going on? How's the wife? How's the family? Uh, how's how's your how's your local assembly? What's going on with you, man? Um, everything's good, uh, health wise for the family. Uh, all is good. Uh, we're currently um working on raising support to be fully funded and go back full time in the ministry so that we don't have to have a job from eight to five. <laughs> but uh <laughs> that's yep. our current our current efforts right now uh what do you say about forgiveness you you for it or against it brother <laughs> i'm i'm 100 for forgiveness and 100 <laughs> for not forgetting yeah uh, there's a brazilian quote that says that even a donkey doesn't fall in the same hole twice yeah. so <laughs> i mean yeah. you you always forgive but then you when somebody wrongs you that gives gives you an understanding as to who they are and what their limitations are. And you just don't go there again. Uh, you, uh, yeah, I, uh, I have, um, what do you think about, well, here's another thing in the States here. This is, I don't even know if this is a thing down here, but you, you know, people would always say, well, you got, you got to forgive yourself. <laughs> you know, yeah. you got, what, what do you, what do you think? How does that hold up in light of Pauline doctrines of grace? What do you think about that? That whole forgive yourself thing? 
Do you have any thoughts about that? What about you, Mike? You got any thoughts on that? I, I want to hear Jonathan, but I, I whenever I That's think right. of that, I, when I ever I got a, when someone says that to me, and they're a believer, I'm going to take them to Galatians two twenty, and, and I'm going to say, you know. I am crucified with Christ. You know, it's not about me. Yeah. <laughs> it's about the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And then I'm going to take him to Colossians 3, what? 2. Oh, ye wanna, are dead, you know. I want to hear Jonathan <laughs> also because uh, that way, if he's wrong, we could just rip him a new one in a public. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's true. That's true. Uh, Galatians 2, 20 is a beautiful verse to address that. But even in the Old Testament, when, um, when, when David uh, wrote Psalms about his sins, he understood that uh, sins are not committed towards another person, but sins towards God. It's always a sin towards right. God. So, yeah. but when when it happens that when when forgiveness is required, sometimes you have to forgive yourself because we tend to beat ourselves up for wrong decisions. And we just have to accept that, you know, we're still humans. We might make a wrong decision, like the example of somebody putting a knife on your throat. Maybe you went to a place that you were not supposed to go to. That's right. And then you just have to, you know, accept that, you know, we will make with our limited knowledge that we will, we're going to make mistakes and, you know, and crying over spilled milk is not something. Good That's, to right. Do. That's hey, right. Hey, Jonathan, are you actually saying we should use, some spiritual common sense. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, um, the whole, I, I, I don't think anybody, uh, I, I, one of my biggest issues when I hit bottom was me beating myself up. I was mm -hmm. enormously frustrated with myself for having screwed up so badly and having, uh, made such a, such a mess of my life. And, um, you know, at, at some point I just had to stop beating myself up and start to see myself as God Amen. sees me. There you you know, go. That was where Amen. identification really, really That's changed that. me because I had to, it, it, there, there's no point in looking up at the Lord through the eyes of the old man Amen. with tears and regret because that old man's dead. Amen. You know, that, that you yeah. must now look upon yourself through the eyes of the new man with joy and gratitude for everything God Amen. made you in his son and just start living like that saint God made you. Amen. You know, That's and, right. I, and, yeah. and that, in that respect, I had to change my whole perspective in order to do it. And then I had this vicious period where I was just like, every time I made a mistake, I would stop and pray and, and ask and apologize for the mistake I made. I knew I didn't have to ask for forgiveness, but I wanted to tell God I was sorry. And even then I finally just had to give it up because I was doing it a hundred times a day and it was a vicious cycle. Amen. And I finally just had to say, Philippians 3.13, forget the, forgetting those things Amen. that are behind and reaching forth under those things that are before. God doesn't need you to chronicle every sin you've ever done. He knows the sins you've done. <laughs> His son went and died on that cross for your sins, man. Amen. Accept what Christ has already done and start to live like the new man. Put that new man on and, and start walking in the spirit and, being able to yeah. uh, uh, be that great ambassador for Christ, just you know, put off that junk and start putting on the new man. Yeah, we keep, so, we Jonathan, we show this butterfly that lights up here, and, <laughs> and uh, you know, until a person understands that that butterfly that now knows that he is a butterfly. He knew that butterfly knew that he was a caterpillar at one time, <laughs> and so that is the key. To when we talk about self-esteem and beating yourself up and yeah. all these other things, it's 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 all that stuff is gone. It's dead. It's the old man, mm -hmm. and the cure is taking on and understanding exactly what uh, Pastor Joel said. It's understanding that it is all about your newness of who you, yeah. who you are in Christ. It's replacing that old life in Adam with the new life in Christ. Uh, so tell me, Jonathan, what are you, what are you, what are you studying? What are you teaching? Amen. What are you, what are you going, yeah. what are you personally uh, digging through right now? Anything good? Yeah. Um, we, I just went through a book, um, The God Ask by uh, Steve Shadrach and uh, mostly relating about support raising and, and, and the value of, of giving. It's a very, very, very interesting book. It opens up a lot of, uh, interesting ideas but just to comment on on the forgiveness of self um that's mostly just a term that we use but it doesn't have any value at all when we say that we forgive ourselves no there's right, no amen. sin that is right. forgiven there's really no it's, relationship that's restored uh in in that act what it is really is for us to be able to understand uh that you know that that's the old man understand that whatever yep. mistake we did is part of what has been forgiven at the cross 
Right. So I think that's 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 an understanding. That yeah. I love that point, brother. Yeah. I mean, it's irrelevant us forgiving ourselves. What's what's the, yeah. the what's important is did has has God forgiven you? Yeah, yeah. recognize, big, yeah. recognize, recognize God's forgiven you. He's the great judge. Amen. Let it go. Yeah. Amen. I yeah. love it. Uh, you um, if I remember right, don't you have like a local assembly there and you do some teaching? What are yeah. you What are you teaching right now? Um. What what we're doing right now is uh, we we are currently helping a church that had closed down for a year and a half. Okay. And we're organizing um, our membership or, you know, reaching out to the people where they are right now. We don't want to grab anybody that's already settled to a different church, yeah. but uh, we're, we're trying to rebuild the church. So we have a, a newsletter uh, on our website where we, we post updates, uh, theindinos.com. So I had to start that up uh, just to make sure that uh, things were there. So say, say that website again. What is it? www.theindinos.com. Theindinos.com. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so T A T I N D I N O S dot com. The Indinos. Com, yes. Yes. All right. Um, Theindinos dot com. We're also um, we have also a business as mission uh, company oh, that we're currently there. running. Great picture. Um, Can I think you see I, it? Yeah, I got it up here. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna. Let's see. Where's the Indinos? Missionaries, Indinos. Look at that. Mm. Look, oh no, you're showing it. <laughs> look at that. Look at this photo. Look at this kid. That's. Mm. Do you have your tongue? No, I guess you don't have your tongue Great out man. there. Yeah, look at that kid. Uh, he's adorable. What's the kid's name? Uh, the one in front is Chase. Uh, Angela is the girl, and Wilfred is the little boy. Okay. All right. That's awesome. Marilyn. That is awesome. so cute. That is so cute. So you could, oh, I'm going to sign up for the weekly newsletter. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> had to get that done. Thank you. All right. Very good. I love it. So you can hang out with us all you want, man. Uh, I'm going to get back into the live chat here. i yeah. um, be curious to know any thoughts you have on anything. Um, you know, we had up here uh, Jerry Winehouse and it said Elon is going after the CCC planted spies. He has. He's gotten rid of a couple already. Um, well, there's and, a lot more to come on the Twitter stuff. <laughs> and then uh, Cliff oh, says, yeah. uh, be careful with Elon, Elon Love. I totally agree with that, too. Yeah. He's got a very technocrat background of uh, uh, some a really sketchy background. I would... Yep. Uh, keep him at arm's length and uh, not expect him to be the second coming because he ain't going to do it. <laughs> well, I was going to say, know? we know he's not the Antichrist. Yeah, so, right, that, right. I mean, he may be against Christ, but right. he ain't the Antichrist. Right. Jonathan <laughs> might be, but not, <laughs> yeah. not, not, not Elon. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Scott Wells says, so what do you say to those that teach there is church doctrine in the book of John? I'll tell you what I'd say. Uh, John 4.22, oh. salvation is of the Jews. That's yeah. what I'd say. <laughs> church doctrine. Are you going to teach that as church doctrine? Salvation is of the Jews. What are you going to do with that verse? Well, Don't get me started on that. What would you say, Jonathan? Brad, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> are you with me on that? What about you, Mike? Brad, uh, would you, I, what would you say about the about John what you, 14 6? Oh, I am the way, the first truth, John. And the life. Oh, yeah. We're talking about first, oh, we're talking first John. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, okay. oh, no, 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 no. She said John. John I'm sorry. Yeah. The, book, the book of John. First yeah. John, well, it was still the same writer. So, yeah. right, right. Uh, but no, I'd say there are timeless principles well, in John as there are in all of the gospel books that are yeah, yeah. that are wonderful. John, John 3, 16 to me is an important verse. The only thing, the problem is, especially like this at Christmas time. That everybody want us, wants to say that when Jesus Christ came, he came as the gift to the world. And I kind of take that and say, wait a minute. When he came, he first of all, he came to many. He didn't come to all right. when you read John 3.16. Right. But the other thing is he came as the gift giver. Right. You know, he ultimately is a gift. It's certainly to the body of Christ. We received the gift of eternal life the yep. moment we trust and believe. But guess what else? He also comes and he's baptized into each and every believer. Right. So the gift giver is also the gift that is given to us. Right. So I, I like that in, in explaining John 3.16 to people. But go ahead, my brother. What yep. do you have to say? 
<laughs> no, I was just saying. All right, what great. You can pull up that verse. Uh, which one? You're at John 14. Yeah. Oh, John. Oops. What? I hit the wrong thing. John. Um, I think no, that's just one of the first verses of, they wanted to uh, teach John 14. Baptist. What was it? 16? Six. Uh, six? Six or eight. Uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm, no yeah. man cometh unto the Father but by me. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'd say I'd yeah. say I'd say that's a timeless principle. Absolutely. Yeah. On the other hand, what was the way in which they came to the Father through Christ during mm. the gospel period? Was yeah. it believing that Christ died on that cross, buried, rose again the third day? Mm. Is that how they got saved no. and had access to the Father yeah. in, during the gospel period? Not at all. You know, you, uh, we uh, we often uh, uh, have over the years uh, brought up John three sixteen. You know, for God so loved the world mm -hmm. that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him uh, should yeah, not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Should not some perish but shall. have everlasting yeah, life. Some say shall not. Some say should. Well, the question yeah. is, believe what? Yeah, that's the <laughs> believe key. in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the gospel was the Lord sitting there telling them what Paul tells them today during the during that gospel period. Even in John 3, 16, you're not going to find death, burial and resurrection on the, of the cross as a payment for all your sins. And you trust yeah. in that. You believe that. And then you get saved. You don't you're not going to find that in John three, you know, but you are going to find an emphasis on faith. And faith is what got you saved. Now, I remember um, when we uh, Fred would would say, all right. So he loved John three sixteen, and he would just say, believe what? Yes. What believe what? Amen. In what sense did God send his son? Yeah. Well, in the sense that he sent his son to fulfill all, all the prophecies to the fathers about establishing his kingdom here on earth, but he was also sent in the sense of dying for the the sins of the world. Uh, but, you know, I mean, you have that thief on the cross, you know, did that thief on the cross who got saved is he sitting there going, mm -hmm. well, he's hanging on that cross going, "Oh, I think the Lord, I think this guy is in the process of dying for my sins and he's going to be buried and he's going to be resurrected. And if I just believe in that, then I'll get saved. And so he had faith in that whole thing. And that's why the Lord told him that, you know, you know, you're going to be with me in paradise. No, yeah. that's not what he believed that got him saved. But he just simply believed that he was the Christ, that he was the Messiah. That's it. That's all he believed. Yeah. He didn't. He had no concept of, you know, payment for sin. Nobody yeah. understood that. Even after they told he he told them he was going to do it, they didn't understand it. Well, couldn't comprehend it. There, there is a term called connecting the dots, and I believe it. Like when I was going to Baptist church, you know, I got a lot of those verses, and I memorized John three sixteen, and I remembered a lot of verses in in John. Um, but the problem was, I never went into. I, I never had the other dots that would connect me until I got to Paul because right. I could say, I believed all that when I was going through Catholicism and I was put in that religion, I believed that Jesus Christ was the son of God. I believed there God, the father, I believed in God, the Holy spirit. I believe that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, but it wasn't until I got to the apostle Paul that I finally said, he didn't just come to save many. He, he died for my sins. Amen. And so mm -hmm. when it became personal and understanding that through the Apostle Paul, those were the other dots that had to be connected. And many people that are involved in de denominationalism and religion, they've never gone to those other dots. They've right. never gone to Paul. Right. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, Jonathan, did, do you got any, ex any thoughts on all of this? What are your thoughts on the book of John? Were we on the right track there? And, and keep it short. I, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I'm going to leave right now. I, Go I dare you to disagree. Come on, bring it. No, I'm totally kidding, brother. Yeah, I, I think, I think you know, uh, because of when John was written, that there are certain things that reflect a little bit uh, close to what church doctrine was. But yep. really, I believe that uh, John wanted to keep Christ's message for the people that were that were the recipients at the time uh, and in that context to still remain pure and you really separated mystery and prophecy and that's still part of prophecy you will find like you said that you will find uh, timeless doctrines there but when you ask about church doctrine you won't really find uh, yeah. something unique there I love that answer well done um uh, Jesse says, uh, forgive. Yes. But learning to not put unrealistic demands on people who don't meet our expectations is so freeing. Well, that just might be the best line of the podcast today. That yeah. was, I love that sentence. That's fantastic. 
We radically root ourselves in Christ and what he did not demand. Love does not demand. Uh, that's a really big thing with how you like that, Jonathan. Okay. Yeah. I love uh, that. <laughs> uh, the, um, now, how is very big on this sort of thing, especially in a in a relationship or a marriage. You got that thing where, well, this person is really not up to snuff, but I'm going to fix this person, and this person needs to, you know, meet all my high expectations. And if he or she doesn't, then I'm just going to uh, endlessly nag that person to death, and you know, going to be a pain in the neck until that person starts to live like, you know, the person I think that person needs to be. <laughs> Um, and, uh, really, you know, you got to let that person, I mean, so long as you're with the believer who's in the word, who loves the Lord, who's, um, you know, who is actively trying to walk the walk, you know, over time that there will be spiritual growth. It's just inevitable. Uh, mm -hmm. but, um, freeing that person from high expectations is a really, really beautiful thing. You got to deal with people where they are. Even Paul, you know, he's to a Jew. I became as a Jew. <laughs> mm -hmm. To a Gentile is a Gentile. Whatever, whatever it took, you got to meet them at their level where they are spiritually, and then maybe help pull them up. But you know, you can't judge them for being at that level. Everybody's at a different Everybody, place, yeah, that's right. uh, spiritually speaking. But and and Galatians six comes into mind, right? Where we lift yeah. each other's up, you know. And it's important, you know, that there, there's this example here in the Philippines where some old houses when they used to move the houses that uh, they would lift up those wooden houses and every the entire village would carry them to another place and right. obviously the the roads here and, and the pathway are not even so some right. of the short guys sometimes would be hanging and everybody else had to bear the burden but when you know, so that's something that living right. in a society in a group of people in a church uh that has to entail you know I love that comment. I'm guessing you might be talking about Galatians 6 1, like, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit mm -hmm. of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. I mean, at the heart of that passage is this spirit of meekness that this, your tone, your perspective, your attitude has got to be one of, uh, you know, I mean, strength under control, basic yeah. humility about yourself knowing that you're also human and capable of mm -hmm. making mistakes rather than looking down on that other person for not meeting your expectations because um, tomorrow you might be the one not not meeting their expectations right right <laughs> um yeah. and there are times too when you you know you could look down at somebody and think oh that's just a spiritual but everybody everybody else is always a spiritual babe instead of you you ever <laughs> notice that people are always thinking that everybody's everybody else all these other people are spiritual i'm not a spiritual babe um, I, I would argue uh, the vast majority of us are still babes uh, until we get to that level of maturity where, like in Philemon, we're talking about how much grace do you show somebody that wronged you. Then you can talk about being you know, a mature believer. Uh, a lot, a lot well, of us are not very, there. very blessed by so many believers in the grace movement that I've become acquainted with. Though, yeah, there's there's some. There's some real pillars of the faith. And, oh, and, absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I, I feel, I feel blessed just to be around some of these people. So anyways, that was a good comment by Josie. Where is this person, Josie? Where? I don't remember. Where are you from, Josie? I can't, I know you told, I know you told us at one point, but I don't, I don't remember. No. Um, anyway, that's a good uh, comment. Yeah. Not trying to be contentious guys, but scripture is silent on forgiving yourself. Uh, it says a lot about how God sees us after his forgiveness. Right. Well, Yes and no. I think you're totally right. And at the same time, I think you can still find an answer to that question from Scripture. I mean, it's um, God's perspective is very, very. You have to see yourself as God sees you. That's the solution to that problem, I would say. You know, forgiving yourself is, you know, letting yourself go of a mistake. You're frustrated about a mistake you made, and you've got to be able to let go of that mistake and frustration and be able to move forward. And a lot of that. A lot of that also ties into identification, yeah, I, I would think, say, yeah. because, you know, mm -hmm. it, it is a matter of you seeing yourself as God sees you. It is a matter of you forgetting those mistakes that you made. You put them behind you. You keep walking forward, looking up, and you continue to keep putting on the new man and just try to, you know, perfect holiness in your walk along the way. So 
I'm not I'm not quite getting what Jerry's saying. Is he saying do forgive yourself, don't forget yourself? I'm not sure where he's going with that. Uh, it says a lot about how God sees us after His forgiveness. So at the and on the one, I think he's right. I, I think that I'm just I think I'm basically reinforcing the point that he's making here in the sense that it doesn't really say a lot about forgiving yourself, and then he then he points to God's forgiveness of you. Okay. To, mm-hmm. It says a lot about how God sees us after His forgiveness, and the point in that is just to say, you know, you should see yourself as God sees you. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. and and learn to live with that. And and also he's using okay the principle in yeah. scripture that you're putting off. What are you putting off? Right. That you're putting off that old man, right? Who's right. dead. Right. The old man is gone. He's D D E A D. That's for you, Bob. But putting <laughs> on putting on the new man, yeah. right? So there's that principle. So anybody that's involved in and not maybe understanding, uh, you know, of how to overcome sin in their life, when they're reading and, and taking in God's word, there if you'll use that putting off and just say, old man, dead, new man, Christ, and now you're looking at how God sees you. And 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 that's it, it may sound difficult, but it's not. Uh, the battle for us right now is in our mind. That's mm-hmm. where the battle rages right now is in our mind. Right. So, you know, old man, new man. They're in constant battle, and you've got to reckon that old man to be dead. And you've got to, you've got to just simply, to put it in, in simple terms, is just to say, wait a minute. It's about who I am in Christ, not who I was, but who I am. Mm-hmm. And that's it. it, it, it um, Jerry, I love that. Quiet. I love that comment. You're always welcome to give us pushback. One of the points here is just to have a civil discussion, even from different points that's of right. view. That's right. uh, we, yeah. we, we, if we can't Amen. model that, what's the point of even having a Grace podcast? Uh, so I, I love that. And it's uh, pushback is great. I have no problem with it. Uh, Scott Wells, Body of Christ. I uh, love that. Um, Cliff says, uh, uh, there's evidence for the late writing of John. It's not synoptic, and some posit that the author worked with Paul, even though he was clearly a kingdom saint, observed Christ after the flesh. Oh, I'm sure there were, um, with with all the apostles, there were a lot of writings outside of what is canon, uh, but I don't think any of those uh, any of those exist, and I don't think we would ever actually... Uh, I think the only things we'll ever find of those, uh, all the authors from the so-called New Testament is um, is what we already have. Uh, Joel, could we say salvation is of the Jews means it comes forth to the world out of Jacob? Um, well, it uh, in in every way. I mean, you have in the gospel period. Uh, yeah, that's, a, that's a great question. I love yeah, that. that is a because good in the gospel period, I mean, at the time, salvation was being offered to the Jews, but the whole basis of the gospel program is that the 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 nation of Israel would be a kingdom of priests through whom God's salvation would be delivered to the Gentiles. The end game was always salvation being offered to the Gentiles after the conversion of Israel when they become that nation of priests. So I think that's a that's a great point. In every respect, mm-hmm. salvation being offered to the Jews and salvation would be through the Jews in the kingdom, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I, do, what do you think about that, Jonathan? You you okay with those? Do you have anything you want to? Oh no, that that's 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 exactly what it means. Uh, yeah. It doesn't mean that Christ came to save just the Jews at the time, but it's just that no, it's uh, yeah. based on the law. It's it has yeah. to go through the Jews. They are supposed to be the kingdom of priests, the ones that right. actually bring out. Well, uh, and that. either and either way you look at that verse. You, you, it still points to the fact that it ain't talking to you. That is not what the program is today at all. Mm-hmm. Salvation mm-hmm. through the Jews. How is that? How is that working out today? What does that look like? <laughs> you know, we're not seeing that. And if you know, salvation to the Jews is also very much, um, you know, a not. It's not something that is. It's something that you'll find in all the Gospels, like uh, Matthew mm-hmm. fifteen. I am not sent, but in the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You know, the uh, salva- the offer of the kingdom was being given to the Jews. It was their kingdom. They were prophesied, promised that kingdom. Um, I don't know. You, you, you okay with that? Yeah. You, yeah. You, um, all right. Uh, well, the, the only thought I have is I think it's a little ironic now. You can take a person from Israel, a Jew, that understands the gospel of the grace of God and 
they go out and preach to a Gentile, <laughs> you know, someone from another nation, and that individual Jew can have an effect yeah. on where a person is going to spend at eternity. So I think that's kind of ironic that through the body of Christ, it, you, it doesn't matter where you come from. Uh, it's on individual salvation. And so mm -hmm. you can take anybody from any nation and they can actually right. uh, be, a, be de help determine where a person is oh, going to yeah. spend eternity. Uh, I, I've, I've learned some wonderful things through some messianic yep. Jews yep. and then they were very steeped in that tradition and they had some insights on some of those old testament carried forward into the new testament some truths in there right. that 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 culturally just go right past me mm -hmm. maybe they, they would bring up some of this stuff so god bless them for their messy mm -hmm. for, for living in messianic this, Jews. however believing. however th 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 there's no there's no elevated status they're like they're yeah. like a polish they need to get on board with the, the new program <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> yeah don't uh, don't get me involved don't tell me all about traditions and all these other things tell yeah. me it's tell me what i need to do to, in order to be saved you know it's also frustrating <laughs> where so many even acts to dispensationalist evangelicals would still hold to some favored position nowadays for the jews we we're all on the same yeah. level right yeah. now. amen mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, very good, Brad. The uh, uh, Scott Wells is back. He says, "So born again, a new creature aren't synonymous." <laughs> <laughs> Praise Here the Lord for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's uh, that was a thing a while, a, a few months ago. I don't remember how long ago this was. This <laughs> debate was going on. Thanks to my dear brother, Pastor Brian Ross, whom I love beyond all words. Amen. Uh, but Brian made the case that essentially, new creature, born again. You really look at it. You dig into it in the Greek and all. All this stuff is basically the same. So, so similar. You could basically say it's the same. Uh, so, uh, yeah, on one sense, yeah, they are very, very similar. And But on the other hand, I have a preference personally to strictly uh, cite what Paul says about new creature in 2 Corinthians 5. I think yeah. I just think it's just better to quote Paul, quote scripture and just go with the concepts that we that, that you have in black and white in his epistles. Mm. Um, so I, I prefer the term new creature, uh, you know, behold all things new. Amen. Um, and, uh, I, I, I just, and I just think it's just for the sake of clarity, simplicity, I stick with the new creature, but essentially, yeah, they're very similar concepts. Um, Hey, Pastor Joe, I'll sign off for now. It's 12, no. 12 o'clock over here. No, <laughs> man. there's no way, brother. It's lunchtime. Uh, once you get on, you got to stick with us till we tell you. No, I'm totally kidding. Brother, I love you to death. Love you, You give that wife a great yeah. big hug and a kiss for us. Okay, brother? Yeah, we'll do. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, guys. Yeah, praise the Lord for you. Uh, Josie says, come on now. Okay, we're coming. <laughs> come on. All, we all love the book of John. It is a spiritual man who will understand the mystery is revealed and illuminated by the Spirit of God through Paul's epistles, though. Exactly. Great yeah. comment. Amen. Uh, and I, I got to say, I have an undying love for the gospel books. I, I just, yep. I, 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 I love the stories of, I love the clash between Christ and the Pharisees when they have an epic showdowns over the law. I just, I live for that. I think it's, I think Christ is endlessly fascinating. Uh, just knowing that he's 100% human, 100% divine, and then just watching what he does and how he does it. It's, it's endlessly fascinating. Um, I, I think I learned. I think I think the gospel it. accounts are a thousand times more uh, impactful if you understand it in the right context. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I was going to say what I've learned more and and come to appreciate and 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 really just love is understanding more about the life of Jesus Christ and his walk when he was on this earth. Because what, what that teaches us is what we're supposed to be doing now, having our walk matching our position. We take on the characteristics of God, the Son, God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit. And so our walk is supposed to match our position. That's right. And that's what we strive for, right. you know. And we do it in, 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 a, in, in, in applying grace right. uh, in our life. So, man— I, I just love the gospels. I, I do too. I love, I love them to death. I actually, I'll make a confession. I, <laughs> last night I watched the chosen Oh, I was season three, episode one. one. I couldn't, I, I couldn't resist. I swore I would never watch that 
garbage again, and I just couldn't resist. And it was such it was such hot garbage. I can't even. It opens with, and let me. And there's something fun. There's something fun. I was going. So I was going through the Gospels last night, and the Sermon on the Mount. It opens with the Sermon on the Mount. Now this already ticked me off before when season two ended because Jesus is walking around trying to think through the Sermon on the Mount, and he's trying and he's getting and he's sharing his thoughts with Matthew. Matthew's giving notes back to him with suggestions about the Sermon on the Mount. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. And then oh. and then because what's the reality? Oh. Jesus told us, I'm not speaking my words to you. These are the words of the Father. He doeth the works. Oh, Lord. He never had to practice one sermon. It was the Father speaking through him is what was going on there. It's just the stupidest thing ever. And then you get to the Sermon on the Mount. Oh, and I knew how this um, episode was going to open. It's going to be Jesus walking around, talking to the crowds, quoting bad translation Bibles, and all this stuff. And it's exactly what it was. The Sermon on the Mount was Jesus talking to the disciples in front of the crowds. Amen. It was a sermon to the disciples. Now, there's timeless principles, things that we can, you know, all learn from. But what was the point of the Sermon on the Mount? Mm. You know, and I had I looked up uh, yesterday what Baker had to say about it. I love what Baker. Now, my fa one of my all time favorite books is Understanding the Gospels by Charles Baker. Mm -hmm. It's on the it's on the zip drives. I, it, to this day, I still frequently refer back to this book and i just i love it baker took the four gospels and he took all the events and put it all in chronological order with references mm -hmm. with short exegesis on each event it's life altering i love i just it it really completely changed the way i viewed the all the gospels and now i love it beyond words um so then but you know talking about the sermon on the mount the, the baker said the purpose of the sermon is to instruct the disciples how to live in view of the persecution and tribulation which they should suffer while waiting for the actual establishment of the kingdom. That's what it was about. As he's, he's totally right here. He says they are instructed to pray for the kingdom to come. The sermon was given to the disciples in the presence of the multitude. The sermon does not present the gospel of salvation or explain how sinners may be saved. Rather, it is addressed to people who were already saved, Amen. who could call God their heavenly father. Much confusion has come from supposing that one can become a Christian by trying to live up to the Sermon on the Mount. He's totally right here. There is a yeah. vast difference between living in order to become a saint mm -hmm. and living as becometh a saint. Amen. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, all right. So, all this, I and mean, I've, I've got a big point. I, I'm, I'm, I'm leading up here to go. here. Here we, here we go. go. Climax. This is the climax. <laughs> this is the climax of the big point here. After the Sermon on the Mount, just shoot me now. After the Sermon on the Mount, you get Judas. Judas joins the group. We don't actually know when Judas joined, but whatever. So he has the twelve do it together, and he says, "I'm going to." No, you remember Sermon on the Mount? He teaches them how to pray. Yeah. My Father, Kingdom come. Thy will be done yep. on earth as it is in heaven. But don't repeat it. You know, like <laughs> like a ritual, yeah, you know, right. <laughs> so yeah. so he gets the he gets the 12 together and he says, I'm going to pray over you. And this is what he says in, in the chosen. He says, <laughs> he says. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face to you and give you peace. Amen. That's what Jesus says. When he prays over the disciples and the chosen, after he just taught them how to pray to the Father in the Sermon on the Mount, that sounds that's like, the stupidest thing I ever heard in my life. That sounds like okay. that sounds the ending of what you just read sounded like a Joel Osteen message about prosperity. Why would he do that? Christ never once prayed anything about himself. He prayed to the Father. He told the disciples to pray to the Father, Amen. and this is the nonsense you see in the chosen. Amen. Let that's me, the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Let me turn your volume up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm glad because oh, I, I saw that. I hate that and, show. And you've talked about it, and, and <laughs> you had my curiosity up. Yeah. And I, when I saw it, I was going to go ahead and watch it. Oh. And then I said, thank God, you know, oh, something in shoot me. Shoot me now. Maybe the new man said, Mike, you don't want to watch this. So I'm glad I didn't watch it. <laughs> oh, I get in the flesh when I watch a program about, about uh, Jesus like that. Uh, that really pray just, for him, my brother. Oh uh, man, yeah, pray it is him. hot garbage. It gets yeah. worse every episode. Uh -oh. Hey, look, we got Gerard, Gerard Long in the house. <laughs> hey. Toe, row, 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 row. Grace to y'all and peace from God the Father and 
the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Awesome to see you. Awesome to see you. Oh, hey, look, Valerie's here. How you doing, sweetheart? Great to see you. Uh, Valerie says, forgiving yourself is knowing the old guy is dead and we are forgiven in Christ. <laughs> Bring it. <Yeah>. Hey. <laughs> Great, Valerie. Valerie says, yeah. uh, Amen. say Amen. it, Mike. That's right. Amen. Uh, Cliff says, regardless how much we all love John, we need to take with care seeing things we subconsciously import from Paul in an effort to spiritualize into something we desire it to say. Yeah, that's the thing about John. A lot of the Christianity would spiritualize John. Mm -hmm. Now, the emphasis in John is on faith, faith, believing that Christ is the Son of God. Everybody would, would recognize that. Well, that was what was required to get saved during that period. You had to believe that he was the Christ. Amen. And then once you believed, then you did the first works, like the Lord told the church at Ephesus in Revelation. You know, you had to, you, faith was what was required to get saved during that gospel period. And, um, you know, John is right to emphasize that in his book. Faith is always necessity. But that doesn't mean that you're going to find doctrine for the church today. All you're going to do is find in that book, Kingdom Doctrine. But yet I would encourage everybody to read the book of John. It's just the most phenomenal. It is It is just life-altering. I, lo I love that book. Some of my favorite stories are in John. Uh, Josie says, uh, I'm from uh, Texas Bible Belt, 15 minutes near Dallas. Ah, if you don't nice. forgive yourself, you'll stay in bondage to condemnation. Jesus paid for your sins. We aren't responsible for other sins either. Um, I might in 2023 try to see if I can find a way to go to Austin because they got that new circuit breaker roller coaster at that, at that amusement park. <laughs> I, I gotta, I gotta go ride that. So maybe we could do a grace conference in Austin. I don't know how far that is from Dallas, but well, I'm happy to know that there's grace believers out in Texas. Uh, there was that Scott guy. What was his name? Was it Scott Horton? Um, and he was on Vimeo and I used to follow him. Uh, but I don't I don't know what happened to him. But there was a, a guy named Scott that was in Texas. I know. There's, I'm sure there's quite. Uh, Greg Bing is in Texas also. Uh, I don't know exactly where he's at. Um, I wonder where up in Addison or somewhere up north there, north, hmm. to, north of Dallas. Uh, you'd think Texas would be overflowing with Grace Churches. Uh, Amy Stewart says uh, Philippians three thirteen to fourteen. Forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Press toward the mark. Amen. Amen. Totally love that. Scripture says uh, those who desire to live godly will suffer. We are sensitive to the spirit. That's right. Uh, I think the first three gospels are synoptic. John is a bit uh, different. I think a lot of people hold that view. Right. Um, the uh, uh, Cliff says in some way, if we don't forgive ourselves after a time of corruption, we are not exercising with ourselves. We are told to exercise unto others, right? Well, you look at the godly sorrow leadeth thee to repentance. That's all God wants. Just change your behavior. Just and we're certainly not called to walk around in guilt and shame either. Right. Amen, right. brother. Yeah. You know, I Amen. mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with being sorry for what you've done. Correct. Godly sorrow leadeth thee to repentance. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, it is uh, something that, uh, you know, it's, it is just designed to change your behavior, change your course. You know, that's like what the Lord told the Told the woman at the well, just go and sin no more. Amen. You know, just stop that sinning. Just stop just doing stop. that behavior. That's what gives God more glory and honor when you just stop. Um, James and John were called the sons of thunder. That's right. Uh, the only good thing, actually, I like the guys that played James and John on The Chosen. That's probably one of the few ha uh, good things I can say about it. And I love the little kid that plays Matthew. He's such a... He's almost autistic. He's so good with numbers and things. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah. uh, he's he's really great. I've seen that. He, he gives a good performance. I'll give yeah, that. You've seen, you've yeah, seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, James and John, were thunder being God's voice. They were a prophecy driven, I believe. No, they were quick to want retribution. <laughs> they were quick to want to, to, to do, um, uh, do vengeance on people that spurned their savior, <laughs> their Messiah. They're like, hey, come on, let's just destroy that city. They don't want to they don't want to talk to you. Wipe them out. And he's like, no. <laughs> How about we call you to the sons of thunder? Huh? Uh, I love that. Uh, Valerie says, if we don't uh, forgive ourselves, we will always seem to be doubting not only ourselves, but what God has done for us. Um, right. You know, and that was a big deal with the transition for me, beating myself up. Stupid idiot. How can you do something? How can you do this? You just hey, and just stop. Quit tearing yourself down. Start seeing yourself as God sees you. And then just start living that way. 
You know, that's a total change of thinking and mentality Amen. that, and that was a change I needed to have because ain't nobody, nobody on this planet can beat himself up better than me. Um, yeah, don't psychoanalyze it into the floor either. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, right. I love that line. Don't psychoanalyze it into the floor. Yeah, that's yeah. a great. <laughs> I love that thought. Um, uh, Ellen says, uh, Ellen L, how you doing, sweet? Hey, great to have you here. Good morning to my dear friends. I've been fighting flesh. Mental yeah. and spiritual battles, I mm -hmm. find all are a building of pathways to cite several wise men and women. It is exhausting, and I sleep a lot. All right, what do you guys got to say about that? I have been fighting flesh, mental, mm -hmm. and spiritual battles. I think mm -hmm. in the face well, of that... Welcome to the human condition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'd you say know. in the face of that, nothing would be better than the word. Yeah. You know? Uh, there would be two things. There would be, uh, I would, I would probably argue, you know, getting into the word, letting the word get into you is the first and foremost thing. Number two, prayer and, and expressing gratitude to God about everything he's made you in his son, expressing gratitude to him for everything. Philippians four, just Philippians on. four. Yeah. Just, just and then you on meditate that. on those things that are good. It's not, there's something about gratitude that'll not just change uh, you know, the battles, the way you approach the battles mm -hmm. you're having, but also success in that battle where you can just, but we will absolutely pray for you. Well, the, um, the one good thing I heard from her comment is she recognizes the fact of what's going on. She realizes where it talks about the flesh war against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And the two are contrary one to another. Amen. So she recognizes that. And that's the first thing. That's a good right thing. There. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Well, you, you quoted it earlier, Joel, the washing of the word. That, yeah. That's Amen. Good. Let that just wash it away. Amen, Amen yeah. brother. Um, it's Fred Nita Snickers, uh, probably. Without the Gospels, I would ask myself, Jesus Christ, too. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. a great point. I love that. That's yeah. A good point. Also, also, what Brad was saying, and I thought about this, was we talk about timeless principles out of different books. But boy, when you go into Psalms, you know, when David says, "Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee." Yeah. The key for us today is to use that verse and say, "Thy word rightly divided have I hid in my heart." Yeah. Because you got to rightly divide it to understand your new identity of who you are in Christ. Yep. So we would add that, or I would, I rightly divide it. So I, I don't sin. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, Josie says, I like, uh, LOL. I liked the chosen until I saw the hollow app Catholic promotions. Uh, exactly. <laughs> uh, a lot of, um, and, uh, in, in fact, uh, that guy that plays Jesus, he's selling some sort of, I don't know, bead thing that you can wear on your wrist or whatever. Uh, so he's a, he's a big old Catholic, the guy playing Jesus. Mm. Um, and um, I liked the first season. I thought the first season was okay. I had some issues with it. I loved the actor that played Nicodemus. Mm. He was a highlight for me. A couple of the miracles actually made me emotional. I really... My big complaint at the time was I actually wanted more of scripture in those scenes that we're all familiar with, like mm -hmm. the woman at the well. Like I wanted, I wanted them to incorporate more of the scripture in those scenes because I feel like it's, it was, it's, those, those, those words are really compelling. Um, and then, uh, and then everything went to pot in season two, uh, really, really quick. Um, yeah, that's all I got. There's a, um, there is on uh, Tubi TV. Uh, Jesus of Nazareth. I don't even know if I do I have a link to that somewhere, um, which is still my all time favorite. Um, uh, Jesus. Um, I don't think I have it up here. I thought I did. Oh, yeah, here we go. Jesus of Nazareth was this was my all time favorite actual dramatization of the life of Christ with uh, Robert Powell. It was epic. Um, so I'll just share the link to that. You can watch oh, it for that's free. That's a classic one. Yeah. 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 And you got the who's I forget this guy's name, but he plays a, such a great Herod. Um, the he he did Hercule uh, Her, uh, Hercule Hercule Poirot. You know the Death on the Nile guy. Um, oh yeah, he'll Poirot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. That act, and he's screaming at the top of his lungs like. Uh, uh, about about killing Christ, and it was just they actually filmed this um, um, uh, filmed Jesus and Nazareth just a, a few yards away from where they were filming uh, Star Wars, 
And one time you had a there, there was actually a scene where Jesus was talking to somebody and uh, by mistake, R2-D2 actually was what? yeah actually floated into the sea. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. You gotta, yeah, you go through IMDb and read the trivia for Jesus of Nazareth, and wow. yeah, there's a lot of intermingling between Star Wars and Jesus <laughs> on the set here, oh, which wow. is really yeah. bizarre. Yeah. But yeah, R2D2 wow. actually took off and yeah. uh, walked on the set of Jesus of Nazareth and uh, made his presence known. Oh, Lord. <laughs> wow, wow, thanks um, to come. Yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, I lo- but I love Jesus and Nazareth. I think the uh, Robert Powell's portrayal was good. I, he needed to be more loving in some cases. But you, but these, this is a portrayal where they actually understood the point of his ministry, which was the establishment of the kingdom and the and the long prophesied Davidic kingdom. And they understood what was going on in the gospel period with the chosen. They haven't the first clue what the whole point of Jesus's. You know, incarnation was the even even uh, last night in episode one. They're like, well, it's just a ministry that's just going to change the world. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's not the point. Never was the point. Yes, of course, his, his life coming to this is going to change the world. But hmm. the point of him coming down here had to do with fulfilling the promises to the fathers of the Messiah to come. The kingdom that was promised. It was all about the good news of the kingdom. And yet on the on the chosen, they haven't the foggy. They're still trying to figure out why why is he here? I don't get yeah. it. I don't know. Yeah. To oh, the, to stop them, it. To them, it's more of a story and a fable rather than history. <laughs> you know, it's actual fact. Why Dude, that's Jesus stupid Christ about came. prophecy. Yeah. I don't think he would have ever let you be a be a <laughs> one of his disciples. You had to at least know some basic stuff. Uh, don't get me started. I'm getting better every day. We get closer to going home, sister. How are Amen. you? Yep. You think we're going home soon, Brad? I think it's close. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, where's your salmon colored shirt? Yeah. I got to get one, apparently. I I might have something that could have. That could have. Yeah. yeah. Mike and I, uh, we should, we should color I coordinate. I salmon last time I was here. Did you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It looks, yeah. it's a good color for you, oh. man. I don't, yeah. Uh, usually the way it goes, the the uh, it, we don't even plan it out this way, but the colors of the shirts often match the colors of the painting behind us. <laughs> so you got blue with me, Brad with the dark red in the middle, and then the light orange on the on the other side. It actually matches the colors of the paintings. It's really yeah. weird how we do that. Coordinates, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's weird. Uh, the uh, so when are some of our right dividers going to make a chosen style film? <laughs> God forbid. If we get uh, the money, we will. <laughs> yeah, I would just recommend Jesus and Nazareth. Oh. And in fact, if we were to do one, we would do yeah. Paul. Yeah. We would do one about Paul. No, no. It's funny you mention that because I'm actually I saw a play by the Hollywood actor Dean Jones, hmm. um, and he did. Oh yes, he did a play called St. John in Exile. It's a one-man right. play in two acts. I actually have the script. I'm trying to learn it right now, and maybe right. one day we'll do this play. Yes, that's, that's goal right. For mine. It, yep. it is acts two, but I only, I'm only enthusiastic about that because I, in turn, want to write a play, a script, right. based on the life of Paul. I want to call it, he was St. John in Exile. I want to write St. Paul in Prison. I want to write that play. And now yeah. we had, hmm. now we did it one, uh, ages ago, I don't know if is it still here. Uh, we did the. Um, the way, autobi- Josie can be the executive producer, right? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did the autobiography of Paul. Uh, I don't know where where is that. Where I don't know where my notes. I have yours. I, in fact, this part of my I have I have a project software. Maybe it's under project. And I and I have that document you put together. The autobiography is one of my reference materials to write that play. Okay, so here, so all right, so years ago, J.C. O'Hare. Uh, did um, uh, and this is in the 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 sermon book, the hundred plus sermon outlines, and he did an outline. He did the bio, autobiography of Paul, as if Paul was talking to you, giving his life story, and all he did was use scriptures to back mm-hmm. it up. And uh, it was um, it was a little too short, so I took I took that concept, I took what O'Hare did, and expanded it, and added a whole bunch of paragraphs. Right. And then we crafted this idea of doing it in the context of his final, uh, his his final stand before Nero, and he tells his life story and basically everything that you read in Acts and his epistles is that's personal. 
we, we incorporated that into his testimony. And uh, I had Fred play Nero and had some, some of the guys, um, you know, were some of the senators that would scream, you know, stuff. Yeah. You must be mad and all this stuff. Um, yeah, I and, then, and then Fred ultimately gave the great condemnation, and then we would do the second uh, Second Timothy four mm. chapter. You know, yeah, um, the, the part I loved in that when you gave that was when you Paul were confronting King Agrippa, and I thought to myself that comment that King Agrippa said, "Thou almost persuadest me yeah. to become a Christian." Yeah. Uh, wow. And I thought, man, what sadness. Words that will oh, haunt him yeah. till the day he dies, mm. man. Wow. Our uh, message is so good today. And Paul's message from when he got it. I mean, you know, it's it's a gospel of love. And for people to reject it, it is so mm. sad, you know. I can't seem to find my document here. Uh, otherwise, I'd share it. But yeah, we did. We did that. We did that once. I could. Put, I'll put that up on. I'll see if I can find it and put it up yeah. on uh, on uh, Supply of Grace tomorrow. Yeah, like I said, I've got. I've got that. I've got that document of yours, yeah. and it's in my projects folder for that project as one of my reference materials. Mm. So it's, I want to. I want to base a lot some, on that. It's That'd around here great. somewhere. I'll yeah. find it. Huh. But yeah, I'll I'll put it on Supply of Grace. Paul's autobiography in his own words. Uh, oh, I'll bet that's the name of it right there. Uh, under, is it under P? Sorry, sorry, sir. Paul's autobiography. There it is. Okay. So I'm, I'll, um, I'll upload that and then I'll share the link to it because it's cool. It's way cool. We, we, you want drama? We'll give you some drama. That is some drama. We'll give you some drama to yeah. read. That's grace based. Mm -hmm. Um, um say something brilliant brad you got a brilliant mind yeah. we could totally uh what else is there well i like things like that i, I would like to see paul's i would like because it's like you say it's written in a, in a format intended for drama and yeah i love it when i see doctrinally sound things done in a in a high production high value production kind of way it's it it, there you go. I shared the link where you could yeah. download Paul's autobiography. It's hilarious. It's awesome. Uh, what would you expect from Mormons, Joel, regarding Chosen? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, when I first started Chosen, I didn't know that there was uh, such a strong connection. And I do believe uh, he is lying through his teeth when he's talking about Mormon influence. There is a great Mormon influence. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the Mormons think that Christ was human until his resurrection, then he became divine, which meant he had faults, he made mistakes, he had to think through his sermons, write it down, do all this stuff. No, that's not what he did. Um, and uh, I think they are giving uh, Jesus that Mormon portrayal of human only without the uh, hypocritic, uh, hypostatic. Hy hypostatic union. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so that's the most irritating part and, in, and not to mention the fact, even last night on season one of episode or episode one of one season, of season three, three, he, you know, he tells the disciples, well, I, I need, I need time to be alone, I, you know? And, and so they all go and go back home and take a break. And there's a little bit of drama. When did Christ ever say that? I need to be alone. I need to go hang out. I need to, I need to think. And, you know, I need I need to chill. I need mm. to relax. I need to. He never did that. He was nonstop go the, mm. the whole three and a half years. He was the energizer bunny, man. <laughs> it was, you know, there was no there was no. OK, we need to take a break. You know, we need to relax. He didn't do that. That's so irritating. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chiyita. Uh, when they, yeah, it's exactly. Uh, Cheetah says, Joel, I have to lower my volume. <laughs> you and me both. Yeah. Don't get me started. <laughs> I am not seeing posts uh, from Brother Gerard. Um, well, I've done nothing. He, I did see him a little bit there. Let me see. What else we got? YouTube thinks Gerard is one of those pesky farmers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, uh, what else do we have here? Lower those screen. I didn't see your uh, comment. To Pastor Joel uh, put it in a screen capture thing. Yep. Well, I don't know what's going on. I have done nothing to him. Uh, I love that, dear brother. Uh, saints may fall, but God catches us before we hit the ground. Um, 
Uh, Lori says, Brad, I'm in Newville at the moment, praying to go home soon, not wanting to die, just waiting on Jesus Christ to come. I know that feeling. <laughs> Newville. Um, but Josie says, uh, flesh is crucified, and the victory is here now. 24-7 is love and grace abounds, lots of hugs, armor of God, and use Philippians filter praying. Um, I had... I went uh, yesterday, I took Lori to go see, uh, I Heard the Bells, you know that movie about the uh, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, mm. Christian movie. Um, Lori was okay with it, I hated it with a passion. Uh, there was um, a moment with, uh, although I love Hen Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, I love, I love that Christmas oh, Bells poem that he did, that thing is absolutely phenomenal. But um, the uh, at one point, Henry Wadsworth, Wadsworth Longfellow's wife goes to church. They do communion and it's just, it's cringe. And then, and then she takes, she takes like a bite of the, the, the little biscuit thing. And she says, Oh, I felt as if I was a new creature. I'm like, you are a new creature. Just read your Bible. Just read Paul. You are already a new creature. <laughs> you should be feeling that way all the time. You're killing me. Yeah. And Lori's just like, oh, I, I know what he's thinking. I know what's going through his mind. <laughs> You're a new creature already. Behold all things new. You don't need to eat a little biscuit to feel like a new creature. Yeah, well, listen, <laughs> we, we talk about the grace movement today, and there is much more grace and much more movement than there was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, because so many people that just talked about the dispensational chart never talked about your new identity. And so as we start sharing the good news about what happened to a person, the moment they trusted and believed that Christ died for their sins, now they're getting a great foundation. It's not a chart that talks about Israel, this and that, right. although you'll come to that but you need to understand, man, you, you now are a new creature in Christ. And then you can find out how you're to operate, uh, you know, uh, uh, under grace. Right. And now you can start understanding the dispensational chart. Yep. Uh, I think we always took it. And I know I did. I'm guilty of it. I, whenever I went out and shared the gospel of the grace of God, I started sharing the dispensational chart with people before they, I even knew if they were saved or not right you um, know and now it's share with them god's love and grace and now do you know what happened to you the moment you just believed and trusted <laughs> boom and get them into that get them grounded in their identity um, amy c is in the house how are you sweet sister great to see you Valerie says it almost felt when watching the chosen as though they filmed it with GoPros attached to sheep. <laughs> yeah exactly uh, exactly yep Yep. Uh, TB is great for documentaries. Exactly. I totally agree with that. Um, yeah. uh, they got a ton of Bigfoot documentaries and I have shared links to every single one of them with Brian Ross. Um, the, uh, lots of, uh, lots of good faith documentaries. And, uh, I love stuff about like, um, the, the crime, true crime stuff. And then there's also the, the, uh, documentaries What's on like old TV. Is that where, where T U B I oh. dot TV to be TV free. It's free content, but you got commercials. I'm on the Roku platform do they have a roku app uh i think that's a totally separate platform okay this is just a website uh and an app where you can just watch there's a million of them now but where you can watch movies and stuff for free right, right. Uh, with commercials but um well, i love the, i love the documentaries that, yeah. on that one i love documentary i, yeah. I just oh, yeah i do too i, I, do too. I love documentaries yeah, yeah. 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 They are just and find a good one, and it's just it's so great. Yeah. And I feel like you know the way technology is now, we could easily put together a good documentary. Yeah. And I've watched some documentaries. I'm like, I could do something a thousand times better than what I'm sitting here watching right now. You know. Well, you know who's who would be good, and I'm just throwing the name out, but uh, who's really good, good at that stuff? And Brad, you may know more is uh, Michael Beckemeyer. Uh, yeah. He's involved, oh yeah. You know, he's very he's creative. doing yeah. he's very creative, and I think. Yeah. I think we could put together a great documentary talking about the grace life, yep. you know, yep. yeah, it'd, um, be under, it'd be unreal. Yeah. I have a list somewhere yeah, of, I uh, must use him for, for a yeah, project. I, he's, he's yeah. very, very mm -hmm. good. Very professional. I have a list good. somewhere of, um, As a matter of fact, he's working with some people. I think he's with target trying to, to get more people to okay. get on that. Yeah. Um, I have a list of, um, 
Let's see here. 53 documentary ideas from mid acts documentary ideas. Um, I, you know, there's, there is a bazillion things we could do. What? You actually have a document for that? I have a 53 mid acts documentary ideas. Yeah. Uh, give me a, for instance, give me uh, an example. Oh, we just go through. There's a uh, grace history project. Well, he's already got books on that. Uh, defense of the rapture, defense of dispensationalism as a counter to the documentaries that Steven Anderson did. Um, satanic conspiracy, uh, art in the Bible. I actually have written that one out. That one's, I need to put that together. JC O'Hare biography, Jordan, Richard Jordan biography, CR yeah. Stam, EW Bollinger biography, Irish grace writers, uh, the grace movement generally, uh, Jordan's chart, you know, a whole documentary about the chart itself. Um, uh, You're talking about the teaching of the chart, or the creation, it, the creation yeah. of it, and and a detailed explanation and, of the chart, the cultural impact. Of I it. probably have that on there because you were always uh, talking on uh, Men's Breakfast about Chart Night. Right. Um, I want to do Chart Night four times. <laughs> once, once a quarter, we should have Chart Night. Chart Night. Uh, <laughs> yeah. How many dispensations Bring are your there? Friends, right? yeah. Bring your um, friends. One of them oh, is yeah. uh, Paul's autobiography yeah. in his own words. Well, Paul's fourth journey. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that, would be, um, that would be the purpose for mm -hmm. that night. That would be for that, yeah. Uh, so there's, you, so you get a sense uh, of the the Grace Mission field, do an overview of Grace missionaries and organizations and stuff. And, you know, Grace being, uh, you know, but, but that would require a lot of traveling. But, you know, that'd be cool seeing these missionaries out in the field, you know, going out to Cambodia and seeing our mm -hmm. dear brother out there. Uh, Larkin's charts. Um um, you know, all that kind of stuff. Something that would appeal to mid acts believers would be kind of fun. Uh, Alan says, I'm reading Empowered by Grace. Ex excellent. Hey. Excellent. Very Hope nice. you enjoy. Yeah. Hope yeah. you enjoy. It's Jordan will tell you it's a little wordy. <laughs> uh, Lori says, uh, until they realize it's actual history, uh, the Bible, they won't get it right. I don't know if I said yeah. that right, but I hope y'all understand yeah. what I mean. I, I think I know we what do. She says. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, we got James Tippins. How you doing? Amen. Come to Christ and be saved. That's right. Hey, hey, hey. Sounds like a good transition for a gospel presentation. Hey, I was going to ask you, brother, with that poem you read yesterday uh, when you were oh, yeah, giving service. Oh, yeah, J.C. O'Hare. Yeah. Would you, can you read that? I think everybody, and that's just my suggestion. Uh, I wish you would read that for people that are listening online on this podcast. All right. So how about, okay. Can you do that? I suppose. I, I like, think it was great. Um, I don't know about you, Brad, but I, I did enjoy that poem. I don't know. Let's see here. Uh, see if you got it and can pull it up. I the same one because I came across a poem, J.C. O'Hare, here a couple months ago reading and I thought, you know, I'm going to put that to music. I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm going to make a hymn out of that. It would be beautiful. Yeah. And I, and especially when we talk about giving the gospel, this poem, <laughs> it certainly gives pretty much the gospel, which I think is great. You got it, my brother? Uh, yeah. There's oh. um, the, uh, I would recommend the Christmas bells poem too, uh, that um, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow did. The one good thing about that terrible movie was it got me interested in his poem. And he, mm. he says at the end here, he says, in the despair, I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail with peace on earth, goodwill to men. That's mm, awesome. That is awesome. That's, yeah, that's, that's just very awesome. good. Yeah. Uh, the rhythms of his poetry, just so great. Uh, well, that's the same rhythms. That's a popular rhythm. That's what mm -hmm. they wrote, uh, The Cremation of Sam McGee. Um, oh, yeah. Do you know that one? No, I don't. Oh, you don't, don't know Cremation uh, of Sam no, McGee? I, there's a lot I don't know. We <laughs> well, could, that's a classic. <laughs> we yeah. could fill hours of that. Robert Service poem. Yeah. 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 Uh, so J.C. O'Hare's Christmas poem, and then we'll let Brad uh, give the gospel. Amen. Sound all right? No. Uh, Christmas season is again at hand. With thoughts of Christ in every land, the Christmas message again will hear the songs of Christ who brought good cheer. The Lord of glory, God's gift of love, who left his home in heaven above, will sing and tell the Savior's birth, how he dwelt with men on earth. Redemption's story, God's own plan, the Lord himself in the form of man. Yes, lower than the angels made, in Bethlehem's manger Christ was laid, the virgin son, the king divine, in David's house, the royal line. 
conceived as was no other child, the seed of woman, undefiled. God's ancient prophets, holy men, foretold Christ's work by mouth and pen. Christ came these scriptures to fulfill. He came to do his Father's will. He left his heavenly home on high. He came on earth to serve and die. His mission was to seek and save. He suffered much. Himself he gave. On Calvary's cross, the Savior died. By wicked men was crucified. But God foreknew this awful crime. It was his own appointed time. The death of Christ was by God's grace that he might save the human race. Save lost sinners, every one who will believe on Christ the Son. Then God raised him from the dead to make his Son the living head. The living Christ on heaven's throne is interceding for his own. Because Christ lives and intercedes, God supplies the Christian's needs. Because Christ there within the veil, the Christian's anchor cannot fail. When you know what God has done, why do you reject his son, despise his grace and spurn his love, and miss a home in heaven above? Believe God's word, accept God's way, tis worse than folly to delay. Christ will save you from your sin and give you joy and peace within. And then from condemnation free, a Merry Christmas yours will be. When you yourself have thus been freed, you will believe man's greatest need. In this world so filled with strife is God's free gift, eternal life. And all who take what God will give shall with Christ forever live. Hey, there you go. Amen. Thank you, my brother. All right. Just, that was just for you, brother. Woo. Hey, Brad, what does it take to get that free gift of eternal life? Beautiful. I, I'm going to be a broken record, and I don't really <laughs> I love care. It. All right? That's all right. <laughs> it, it, it's three words. Look up 1 Corinthians 15. It's the death, it's the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I Amen. said again, we're here in the Christmas season right now. Is it just about peace on earth, goodwill to men? Well, it's part of that, but what's the foundation of the Christmas message is that man stood in need of a savior because of the sin that was brought unto us by one man, Adam. We're, we are found, we are born and we're found under sin, but we can be relieved of that burden when we identify with that death and that burial and ultimately that resurrection of our Lord and savior Christ. That's what Easter is about. So I'm trying to make it relative to what people understand. We're in Christmas right now. We love the peace on earth, goodwill to men, but it's m so much more and deeper and better than that. We need to identify with those three words, the action that Christ took. He died, he was buried, he was buried, and then he rose again to, over, to overcome the power of death and the power that sin holds on us. And then to make it more personal, Paul writes in Romans chapter 6, verse 4, this is our personal identification with that truth. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism. Amen. Unto death. Preach it, brother. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so also we should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. That was, that's what Mike was talking Amen. about earlier today. So, brother, give your life to Christ. Bow your knee and identify with that death and that burial and that resurrection. Amen. Amen. <laughs> that was awesome. Amen. Uh, I'm Beautiful. just going through the, uh, the, la the latest of the comments here uh they're all fantastic i'll just leave it at that um dude it was awesome having you here hey, brad man. and I love uh, awesome brad. having uh, thanks for inviting me having mike here um uh -huh. uh, uh, mike you were fantastic yeah, brother it was awesome. great having you here yeah. uh how about a word of prayer heavenly father father how much we love you how grateful we are I, and father we just i mean I, how can we even find the words to praise you again yeah. and again for the just the glory of of everything, the the simplicity of the gospel, 
uh, the, the, the beautiful presentation we got from Brad the, for, about the gospel, how grateful we are for just the means by which we can be reconciled to you. And not only that, just how you totally transform us when we believe and your willingness to empower us so richly with your grace and your spirit, making us new creatures, all that stuff. We are just, we're overwhelmed and grateful for everything. And I just pray, Father, that we are able to take all, all that we know about everything we are and help it and, and, and be able to apply that to our day-to-day life, especially during the hard times. We can just, regardless of the circumstances, still be able to relish and, and celebrate everything we are in your Son. And I pray, Father, that that knowledge, that your word will also empower us to endure the hard times with joy. We will just look up at you with absolute gratitude. And, Father, don't get me started. Father, I'll just say that uh, I just pray that the uh, all the saints here for whom we are so grateful, everybody in the live chat, everybody in the subscribers of the channel, all the members of the church, um, I just lift all of them up to you. I pray, Father, for a spiritual, a, you know, greater spiritual understanding, abounding in love and joy and grace, and that all these dear saints will be shining lights of your grace in the sphere of influence that they have. I pray, Father, that they will all just be able to, as we get come together around your word, approve the things that are excellent. They'll do the work of evangelists, be instant in season, out of season, and help the lost be able to find a get that have that saving faith in your son uh, father i just pray all these things in the name of your son our savior the lord jesus christ amen amen oh, man. Um, amen all right it was great having you guys here we'll be yeah, back amen. tomorrow morning tuesday morning uh for another another uh grace life podcast so come on back you guys have a bad day we'll see you tomorrow bye-bye